turn the music up just a little bit. I'm on the pressure. I mean, we got a senior late team. It's all or nothing. It's, you know, it's all or nothing. We got. These are the best kids that I've ever had in 29 years of coaching. Going into my I'm on a mission. They probably think I'm missing. Some screws, but it's these three nails that keep me tripping. If God ain't with me, I know that I'm gonna fail. And ain't a wish in the world that could wish a boy well. Say, my expectation is not to let the quarterback throw a deep pass at all. He can he can throw it short. But I'm, I'm, I'm this year is, is different, and I feel like we can really do something. Known the cue to go, feel like giving up. It's been kind of aggravating. You wanted to be. Never meant to have me, and problems keep coming at me. I want to walk with Jesus, but we should destroy everything that we see. I'm hoping prayer works, cause these walls can't hear me. Come on. So I drop to my knees and scream with my mind. I tell them these walls can't hear me. It's not only to win a playoff game. Our goal is to be there December 16th or 17th to be in the big dance. That's our goal. We find ourselves in another Dade County matchup. Hylia High School Thoroughbreds versus Hylia Miami Lakes Trojans. We are at the bottom of the map. South Florida's finest football teams in the entire nation. As you can see, we're in Henry Mylander Stadium. This is High School Football Primetime presented by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. You're watching football on the HSPN. He's going to snap, punt it. He's at the 40. He's at the 40. He's out his feet. It is 7 o'clock across your cities. Welcome to HSPN. My name is Ryan Stout. Alongside me, alongside me, Glenn Stout. We are here once again, Henry Mylander Stadium in Hialeah, Florida. We got a big matchup today between Hialeah High School and Hialeah Miami Lakes High School, the Trojans. And not only is this a special broadcast coming in to you, but Glenn, tell us why this is one of our very special broadcast coming to you tonight. Yeah, Ryan, I'll tell you, this is the birthplace of, uh, well, it started out as NCRA Sports Network uh, a year ago. We were down here, our first inaugural broadcast, uh, myself and um, Elijah Thompson on the camera. We've grown substantially since then. Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation has been been involved with uh, the Hialeah Thoroughbreds uh, on the mentoring side. And it's just great to be back. It's been a one-year anniversary. And uh, here we are. Last year was uh, quite a blowout. But doesn't matter what happens in this game, you're going to find out just the same as we found out last year, that everybody stays until the final gun. This is a 63-year-old rivalry. Wow. Yes, 63 years. That's 1950. So that just probably wipes out most of the people watching the broadcast tonight and probably some of their parents. Um, so this thing, this rivalry goes back, and that's why both sides of the stadium will be packed. And uh, Hialeah comes in here 1-1, one and, one, and the uh, Miami Lakes comes in here 0-2. Oh so I don't care if the, you know, if you played in, uh, uh, you guys out there, or the players out there and coaches, you know this, you played in a rivalry game. It doesn't matter if one team is 10-0 and 0 and the other team is 0-10. The fans are still going to show up, and you can throw the records out of the out of the books because it doesn't matter it's a grudge match so that's what we're looking at ryan and we're glad to be back here coach dc one of kda uh, uh persons on kda board is with us he's down on the field he coaches for the thoroughbreds and we're, it's great to be back here it's great to be here with you and uh aaron curran who sits on the board of keeping dreams alive foundation and and a, and a bunch of uh nice kids uh that are helping us up here interns from the uh, thoroughbreds yes what an opportunity to be not only back in Miami-Dade County with some of the top football teams in the entire nation, but what what a great opportunity to come out here and just be a part of history. Uh, we, as you said, 63 years. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine how 
you know, I've never been part of something like this uh, in my entire life, uh, my 21 years of existence. But um, it was great coming down to Hiley of Miami Lakes and Hiley High School the other day to capture some of uh, some interviews with these with these uh, football players and just. You know, when you walk around these schools, coming up from uh, North Broward County, just you come you come down to Hialeah and wow, you talk about old school. You're talking about old Florida, but oh man, we are excited bringing high school football to you. Uh, if you watched and you tuned in with us last night, we were over at Traz Pal Stadium. We got an opportunity to check out Booker T. Washington, the number one high school football team in the nation against the Carroll City Chiefs. And what a game that was. It... um Booker T, they came in uh, with high expectations, not because they're number one, but hey, it's Dade County football, and you never know. You can make all the predictions in the world, but when it comes down to playing in Dade County, you're playing for pride, and you're playing for the school. So they came in, and uh, they did their thing. They did, and it was uh, a 45 does nothing. It, it got out of hand early, and uh, when it when it did that, uh, we just kind of watched the the Treon show and and the uh, and and the tornadoes do their thing. Uh, they've got to bring in their second string quarterback late in the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter, and beginning of the fourth quarter, and uh, got him a lot of playing time, which is important to uh, continue that dominance. Because folks, uh, if you don't know it, you should you'll know it by now. The uh, the tornadoes are ranked number one in the nation. And they're followed by uh, number three ranked in the nation, St. Thomas Aquinas. And, and down there at number 10 is uh, Central. So they're not far off there. And, and yeah, you know, Trayon, 14 for 18, 200 and, uh, I believe, 86 yards. And he did a, he did his thing. Uh, you let him get outside the pocket, it's going to be dangerous. you got another quarterback out here right now, Alan Edward. That is a dangerous dual threat quarterback that you talk about when he gets loose in the pocket. He's got that long strider. He can turn one loose. Last year this time, he broke a, about a 75-yarder that blew this game open. And uh, I got to tell you something interesting. As you were setting up up here, we went down the street because we were hungry. And we got here late. And uh, I was with Kevin and, and uh, Lisa, and we went down the street. And uh, it was traffic jam, so we couldn't get out on the main street to go over to one of the, the chains. And we got down there to... Kevin, it was one of those little bitty, little bitty hole in the wall. But when I saw that guy outside uh, having his coffee on the on, on the little stoop there, I said, "Man, this has got to be a typical Cuban little restaurant." We zipped in there. Man, not only was it a little restaurant on the front, but it was a laundromat on the back. And uh, we ordered some <laughs> Cuban sandwiches. I love it. Didn't get a chance to get any Cuban coffee, but I'll tell you, when when we got finished at the end of the day, brought it back. Man, it was authentic Cuban bread on those sandwiches. We got them back here. Those things melted in your mouth, and it was just, it was delicious. It was, what was important, man, it was part of the flair of the area we're in. And we're in South Florida, we're in Hialeah, Florida, and we're in an area where that it's just, you know, it's, it's, it, there's all kind of ethnic diversity, uh, Spanish influence, Cuban, obviously, and it was just cool to be in there with the fans running, the, the, the guys smoking the Cuban cigars outside getting their Cuban coffee. So, man, we're in Hialeah. I'm loving it, and uh, we're getting ready to run this game. I love it. South Florida, we got some great weather tonight. Hopefully, uh, we got a bit of overcast. Hopefully, we don't get any boomers coming in. Last night, had some squalls come over from the shore side, but I'm glad you brought up Alan Edward. Wow. Um, one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. Um was committed to Miami, uh, went through some stuff, and um, we're, we're guessing that he has decommitted. But uh, that's what we want to bring to you, Alan Edward, one of the impact players in the night alongside many. Um, as you can see, Alan Edward, he is QB number 10. Tonight he will be wearing number 18. Unfortunately, um, this is the first time. This is actually the reveal of their of their red jerseys yeah the red jerseys they whipped them out tonight for the broadcast unfortunately i talked to coach dc and uh, i guess they left the door open to uh, the uniform room and someone they either misplaced it or someone happened to pick it up but alongside alan edward we got standing right in front of him one of the monsters it's getting highly recruited by schools all over the nation Alik terry is our center tonight number 54 and Take you to the defensive side of the ball. They like to call him the brains of the operations. Maybe might as well be the quarterback on the defensive side, Nico Gonzalez. If you've watched uh, our past broadcasts, 
throughout the season and during the Elite 7v7 tournaments, you will see Nico in one of our official Elite 7v7 commercials. Uh, Nico, wow. Um, coming into this game, I know he's got high expectations for himself, but uh, a hard hitter. He's got some hands, and I know he's a playmaker, and I know you can tell us a little bit about Nico. Yeah, Nico is uh, he was another uh, uh, outstanding uh, young athlete. And again, Ryan, these these all these guys you're naming off, they played last year, and they started last year. But what was interesting about our initial broadcast last year is Nico comes cold off the bench, and I didn't know who Nico was. And uh, cold off the bench, first play from scrimmage, it's a pick six. And... I understand that this young man is just phenomenal. Then I got to watch him, and then we got to watch him in the, uh, I guess it was a spring game when we were up in Palm Beach, and um, and then to see him grow, and you did the special on him. I, I swear, you know, when you see that special, you know, we, we put it on the Auburn website because he had that <laughs> Auburn get-up on, and, I mean, you talk about a great, great PR for Auburn. Nico, uh, you know, you're doing it for him up there, and hopefully they're taking a look at you too. Nico, a, a great young man, good size, who will come downhill and hurt you. And he put on about 25, 30 pounds since last year. And he has already had a pick six this year, uh, last week's game. And he is due for a lot more. So keep an eye on Nico Gonzalez tonight. He's, uh, he's number uh, nine. Nico is number nine. And so same number he had last year. So keep an eye on Nico. And they played Southwest last week. Is that correct? Yes, it is. They played Southwest last week. I had an opportunity to see the, the highlight tape, and what a game. Um, I think it was a high-scoring game, uh, a lot of offense. But uh, I, I, I think they came out with the L. They didn't come home with the W, um, put them at 2-1. and one. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, no, they come in at, at who? Hylia High School. Hylia, Hylia comes in 1-1. One and one. They come in 1-1. One and one. Okay, they're in their third game. Yeah, okay. they're coming in on their third game. Well, it's... Um, it's a big game, like we said, and uh, after talking to these coaches, Coach Marroquin, uh, Dennis Marroquin down there, offense coordinator, Coach Berman, um, head coach, and Coach DC, which is a part of uh, the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation, and if you're watch, watching with us last night, he tuned in, uh, was on play-by-play -play with us. Um, hi, Leah. They've, they, they've struggled a little bit. They got a lot of big-time athletes on the field. But after talking to the coaches and, and talking to the players um, since this last spring, it, it doesn't seem like they can put they can't put it together. Yeah, uh, what, and they got and they came off last season. They had that great wall of Dade. Now, Alik Terry up there is uh, is a moose that's loose. They got some other phenomenal big uh, linemen on the front that that are uh, big people. They've got uh, man, they got all the talent in the world to get all the way up to uh, Orlando, but. They've got to uh, mature enough to be able to believe enough that they can do that in order to make that, that step that they need to make to get in with those elite athletes and those elite teams that, that, are, that know how to get there and to, to know how to, to win a game, to know how to put one away, and, and, and then to make those steps through the playoffs into the championship game. So it's a unique team, a unique coaching staff that you have to have, and they've, they, they're not out of it by any means, but they've gotta, they can't you know, go away with another loss Although these are two teams are in two different districts, you just can't get there by losing. You got to get there by winning. Right. There's high expectations with the T breads this year, and as we're talking about them, um, we can break them down. Uh, we got a 7:30 kickoff. Things are running smoothly on the field. You got the cheerleaders. You got the bands out. You got the the premiere show off of their red jerseys. And uh, let's let's break down these guys. We got Alan Edward, number 10. You will be hearing him. He is number 18 tonight. Hometown Hialeah, Florida. He will be our quarterback. He is undeclared. His traits, accuracy, delivery, and his arm strength. If you haven't watched this kid's highlight tape, you need to go on YouTube right now and check it out. You talk about a long strider. He looks like he's galloping on the field. And you will get a chance to see it tonight. Actually, I remember watching um, last season when you we did the broadcast. What did he take it, like 70 yards down the field? Yeah, he, uh, he long strided, and he's got a long stride, probably two strides every five yards. Uh, 75 yards and that's kind of when they broke it out last year and and they took it to him after that play he he did uh, the same thing Treon does he broke in the pocket moved around a little bit and then he saw that lane and and took off then cut across back across the field and for about another 30 40 yards took it right to the paint well some of his offers Appalachian State 
um, on his list. FIU, Louisiana Lafayette, um, Louisville, Miami, Florida, which he was committed to. Ole Miss, got some good SEC right there. Uh, University of South Florida and West Virginia. Um, Alan Edward is on their radar and looking to get this kid to the next level because uh, just like we know, he is going to go to the next level and he is gonna, going to shine. Um, at any level that he plays, D1, D2, D3, but most likely we'll, uh, we'll be seeing him on the D1 level. Uh, let's go on right on down the list. We got Alik Terry, number 54, 6'1", 300 pounds, class of 200, 2014, hometown Hialeah. He will be the center tonight. What a, what a great privilege it is to go out to practice, and these guys are like two peas in a pod. You see Allen, you're going to see Alik. These guys, they got to have great chemistry, obviously, because, you know, you got the center quarterback exchange. But Alik Terry, not only is he being offered and being looked at by schools all around the nation, he is the leader of the so-called Great Wall of Dade. Now, we weren't introduced to the Great Wall of Dade until we were introduced to Coach DC and Miami-Dade County football. As being a part of Broward County, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like it's two different states. Uh, you come down across that border, and it's just a different mentality of football. But he is, Alik has also undeclared some of his traits, strength, mobility, and size. Offers Buffalo, Cincinnati, East Carolina, FIU, Marshall, Memphis, Ohio, South Alabama, University of South Florida, Tulane, and Western Kentucky. And as we go into the impact players of the game, we actually have interviews that we got this past spring. We don't want to give them all away at once. Uh, so we're going to get ready to get going in this game. We've got a 7.30 kickoff. Stay tuned with us. We are going to go into some of these interviews with some of these athletes, Alik, Allen, and the other thoroughbreds. Stay with us. Real good this season. We found we, we got a lot of guys that, that know can make plays for this upcoming season, and this season can be... One of the one of the record books dominate everybody. The team to get closer as a family. Everybody's gonna work hard here, regardless. We're gonna work hard, but everybody have that bond and to be a family because you have to be a family to go far. Dominate everybody. Discipline and leadership and dominate everybody. I need. To, I just need to be a vocal leader, and that's a problem I really have. But I'm gonna work on it this year. And that's what I need to do. I think all of us just went through the motions and not we we, we was focused, but we wasn't that focused to do what we had to do. So yeah, this year I'm gonna just get in the head and just do what we gotta do this year. Back in um December, you know, I felt like UM was giving a lot of attention. It really was. And I was just talking to you about UM. I just kept going over there, visits, you know, just watching a spring practice and then and finally on February 13 they threw the offer at me. It was, really, it was really a surprise because I didn't see it coming. So I was sitting in class and then they just told me that I had an offer from OUM. And I was like, I'm sitting in class like, wow, did they offer me just now? And I was surprised about it. And then it just went great from there. I mean, all I, all I did was just shake my head because I didn't see it coming. Like I said, I was sitting in class and my phone just kept vibrating, kept vibrating tweets from text messages to phone calls. And then I was like, wow. And, and, it was just a surprise for me. I mean, in person, I'm, re I'm really quiet in person. If you see me in person, I'm really quiet. And then I'm always having my headphones on. I'm just in my own little world. But when it comes to football, I'm going to play around, joke around. But when it's time to go to work, I'll go to work. I just go through everything the coaches tell me to do and I do it. And I just go hard do everything I do. I'm going to always try to be the first person when running. Bust right here is faster than me, but at, at the time we race, I try to be busty at times. Though, so, yeah, that's what I try to work on. Uh, me being a leader and going on playoffs and hopefully to the state championship. It came from our, our former coach, he's at Northwestern now, um, George Stubbs. Like, he made sure like, that we was always the best, so we call ourselves the Great Waller Day. Not the Good Waller Day, but the Great Waller Day. Why, why, did it, why is that their name? Why are they the Great Waller Day? Like, what makes them so special that they're the Great Waller Day? But like, we outwork, we feel like we outwork everybody, so we can consider ourselves great. With the team, I felt the leaders didn't step up like how they were supposed to. Uh, even, even us, even as, as, as sophomores, as, I mean juniors. We, we were supposed to step up, but we didn't. And it was a lack of discipline. Like we, had, we lacked a lot of discipline. And now that we're the seniors, we're making sure we had that discipline and everything that we need so it could be successful this season. Family, having that bond. I feel that we have that bond already, but we need to like become even closer. And everybody works hard regardless. Everybody puts in that, puts in that extra effort. So this should be something great 
this come, upcoming spring, we should we should destroy everything that we should. State championship. Go, state far, go as far as we can. Now, what's it going to take to get to that state championship? That's what the people want to know. Tell the people. Putting in that extra work, getting done in the classroom, just get it done. And be disciplined. And then everything will handle itself. Doing the summer, I'm putting my hamstring. I couldn't do nothing. Just have to come back from the injury like that. Yes. So how, how's it feel now? He's 100% right now. 100% yes. ready to go. Yes. Now, I only played the last three games of the season, so that was a struggle for me. And when I came back, pretty much, the lack of leadership, it was less vocal, and the seniors were just like going through the motions, and it wasn't in it, like all the other classmates and stuff. Drag up offers, be a leader in my team, and do as much jobs as I can. Academically, I have a 3.2 GPA right now. With my expectation this year, I want to be a leader. Um, I passed running back Seymour. He had a record at the school, so I'm trying to break his record this year. And I'm trying to get 2,000. The day in life, like they say, just to do it. I just do it like Nike. <laughs> I just do it. Coach DC gave me the name Hollywood because he say I'm a I'm an actor, or as as he say a, a performer. Yeah, he say I could I could adapt to any situation. So he called me Hollywood. I like the name for the for the simple fact that I'm a I'm a like I'm a person. I feel that I'm a big time player. You feel me? So the name Hollywood, I feel it fits me. The struggles of last year is containing a quarterback. I had a problem with containing a quarterback, but this year my coach, he helped me a, a lot off the field. You know, one-on-one -on -one with, with my coach, he, he really helped me a lot. Focus, focus is basically a student, we are student athletes. So the student part always comes before the athletes. So we gotta take our own personal time out, whether it's taking a day off from practice, letting the coach know that we gotta study for this and study for that, you know, ahead of time. That way uh, it really doesn't interfere with practice, but it's good to get your grades and stuff first. Because without the grades, you won't be able to go to school. My expectation is not to let the quarterback throw a deep pass at all. He could, he could throw a short. But I'm I'm coming. And how much time are you gonna give? Uh, I give him 1.5 seconds. I prefer to think about my past and listen to my music. Think about things that I done right and done wrong, and and ways that I could kind of use it as motivation to move and strive for success. To be ambitious. You can expect my defense to be number one. T. Brads, we're we're number one. Period. Offense, defense, no no matter. Some people would say it was a good year. Some people would say it was, it was an okay. But personally, I think I think we could have done a lot better. Uh, I had a lot. Uh, there was a lot of things that had to do with our our four losses. It, uh, discipline, for one. I mean, and it's just we, we were missing we were missing the right players, you know. So this year this year I think it's different because we got we got very like top of the line kids here, me myself included. But. Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to this this season. There was many things I, I struggled on. Um, it could be from attributes to leading the team as well. I mean, this year I'm, I'm definitely going to change myself, make myself more of a leader than I was last year. Last year it was hard to get through to some guys because um, because of the discipline factor. So uh, it was difficult, and, and I didn't really want to step up and and you know sh shout out to them. But now this year it's, it's different, and I feel like we can really do something. The expectations I have are um, just basically everyone getting better, everyone coming in sync for, for the fall season coming and everyone just getting together, knowing what they're doing, uh, learning a lot more and uh, just, just coming together as a team and a family and to uh, just work, work on their specific um, things that they need to work on at, at, at their position so we can be together all around a better team. No pressure at all. I mean, it's it's good. It makes sense. I mean, I I'd like to consider myself a smart player on the defense. Uh, there's there's things I can read. You know, if the quarterback takes a three-step drop or a five-step drop, where he's looking, where I need to be. But um, I I'd, I'd agree with Coach DC. I mean, it, it makes sense. <laughs> I, I I think it's easy because I, I I know what's I know what's to come. 
And uh, there's, there's a lot of things I do to prepare myself. Like, I, I'll be in school, you know. I, I'll do a little swim move around the corner, around, around some kids, you know. Uh, but um, that, that just, it, it's something in my brain, you know. It's just, it, it, yeah, it's natural. We're, we're here. We're ready. Ready to be the number one, number one defense, you know. We, we, we got pretty much all the pieces we need so far. Uh, and, and today's the first day of pads, you know. We're, <clears throat> we're trying to make it work. See what we have, but I'm I'm pretty sure we got we got what we need and we're coming we're coming this year. I can't wait. What's the word for uh, 2013 fall season? The word uh, I'd have to say um, the comeback. Back to you live, Mile Lander Stadium, Hialeah, Florida. I'm Glenn Stout here with Ryan Stout. We are glad to have you back with us live tonight. We are uh, excited to be back on our annual return to the Hialeah Thoroughbreds, Hialeah Miami Lakes 63-year-old rivalry. Wow, that is older than where I went to the Fort Lauderdale Flying L's. They had rivalries that ran, but I'm not sure. They might have had them 63 years against Stranahan High School. But anyways, that's a long rivalry. That's a heated rivalry. You can throw all the records out of the, out of the books, folks, when you watch this kind of game because it's a grudge match. But... Let me be assured that these guys are playing for something bigger than a rivalry, and they're playing to get to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. You're watching HSPN Primetime, HSPN Game Day, and we're excited to bring this to you, presented to you by Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. The foundation is a 501c3 that we do academic mentoring with student-athletes, and we do it with these student-athletes here. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, both teams should be taking the field. We'll have the national anthem. They're going to throw the coin toss and be ready to go. Keep watching us on HSPN. High School Game Day brought to you by HSPN, High School Production Network. The High School Production Network is the number one high school sports broadcast network in the nation, bringing you high school sports and events by the high school student, for the high school student. HSBN is in place to provide internships for all high school students that have a passion for broadcasting. HSBN is providing opportunities for students to use their passion to not only pursue a great college education, but to endure real life experiences through a viable entity. To find out more information on HSBN, check us out at www.hsbnsports.com. Teams are getting ready to come out for the kickoff of this annual Mylander Field. This is the classic. I'm not sure if it even has a name, but I'll tell you what, it should after 63 long years. Um, I can see the teams are peeking out of the scoreboard, underneath the scoreboard, out of their locker rooms. Cheerleaders are all set up. Beautiful night down here. You know, we're right down the street from Traz Powell. We've been in Traz Powell Stadium. A lot. We'll be in Trash Pal Stadium a lot this year. Folks, if you're uh, if you're wondering, we're covering Booker T for about four or five more games. And then we're gonna head up to Broward County. And we're gonna catch uh, we're gonna catch uh, Northwestern and Ely up in Broward County. And then we're going to at the end of the season, we're gonna be able to catch number three nationally ranked St. Thomas Aquinas up playing against Brandon Powell and the Deerfield Bucks up in Deerfield High School in Deerfield, Florida. So we've got an action-packed schedule for you all the way through to the playoffs. So we're excited to be here. We're excited to have you there. We've got all systems running on go. We even got that daggone scoreboard of ours operating. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. I mean, I, and I heard, uh, I heard Glenn mention last night something about replay. I looked at him with the crazy eye. <laughs> that, that's the next thing on our list. But highly of Miami Lakes. One captain they sent out, number four, but on uh, the Hialeah High School, the the T-Breds. How are we going to do this tonight? They're both Hialeah. I got it, but you're going to have problems because I remember last year I had problems too, real problems. Jeremy Sheriff, number 11, one of our captains. 44, Dominique Elverson. We got Alik Terry, number 54, and I believe number 56, Dave Montes. Yeah, it's going to get interesting when you get a mouthful. It's all Hialeah, Hialeah, and we're in Hialeah, so we're going to make this thing happen. Man, the uh, the stadium is shaking. You might see the camera shaking, 
And folks, I'll tell you what, we're in a uh, high school stadium, and that's one of the challenges to doing live broadcasts. I we're not it. used to it. And uh, but we make it we make it happen. We I make it happen when we're here. Yeah, I love it. It's uh it's always it's always nice and loud. You get you feel the, the shakes from the kids going nuts and uh, I love the thing they mentioned about what Coach D always says because we're, we're a product of Broward County and when we come to Dade County he says Dade County schools they don't play backyard football <laughs> and here come the T-Breds here you go the T-Breds brand new red jerseys they rolled them out for this game today we're excited about it sun's going down they're excited about it we're getting ready to rumble it's going to be a big one. Highly Miami Lakes. A lot of tradition. A lot of tradition in this game. A few more minutes, we'll have the uh, national anthem, and then we'll be ready for kickoff, Ryan. This is exciting. Well, they got the trophy down there. They got the big trophy they play for every year, and Highly obviously has it down there on the sideline. There you go. And that must be a T-bread down there holding last year's championship trophy. Well, like I said, it's a beautiful night tonight. Probably uh, about 70 degrees or probably about 80 degrees. And um, overcast, rained a little bit today. Uh, rained a lot today up in Broward County. I don't know about down here. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not as bad as it was last night. You know, what's interesting, Ryan, is... I didn't hear a national anthem. Oh, they did it before. They did it as we were in the, the commercials. Okay. All right, I got it. So the T-Breds are going to kick off this game, and they're going to uh, they're gonna make this thing happen. And uh, they're going to make this thing happen big. Well, that was the kickoff. We had a couple things going on here in the press box. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a high school box, and we've got a uh, coach's box, actually. And, uh, you know, every once in a while we get mixed up. But, hey, we're in the game. The game's live, and, and uh, we're bringing it to you. The Miami Lakes bring the ball up, and they are um, got a first down at the 20-yard line. Got the quarterback. Looks like he's uh, number and to give his off tackle, picks up about three or four yards. And he's going to head over for a play. He's uh, number uh, 15. I'm trying to get his number. Number 20 with the carry. Brings up second down. Single back in the backfield for a 22 set. Gives up the middle. There's nothing there. As a matter of fact, he might have lost a yard. Zone read up the middle, number 20. Number 20 is Malik Shannon. And uh, Malik got the ball and lost a few yards. Going to bring up about a third down, and it looks like about five yards. Like dusk right now, so it's a little difficult to see across the field. Got trips to the bottom side here. Single coverage on the top. Looks like T. Breds are threatening. Yeah, they're blitzing. They're bringing both linebackers in, and that quarterback scrambling. He, he isn't going him. anywhere. Number 44, Dominique Elverson. Mike Alvarez, Michael Alvarez, quarterback, number 15. Got him as he ran this way. Dominique, linebacker, 6'1", 230-pound senior, coming off the edge. I love it. Big boy, big boy. Bringing up fourth down in punt formation. Fourth and about 
Oh boy, 15. First punt of the night. Snap is low. If he gets it off, it's almost blocked. It's going straight up. It's a spiral, but it's only going to be about a 10 yard punt. Gets a decent roll. And they're going to down it right there inside about the 42, 43 yard line of uh, Thoroughbreds. Well, three and out. Highly of Miami Lakes. They come out. They didn't produce. Bringing that great wall of Dade, the uh, sought out quarterback from around the nation. Alan Edward and a whole host of skill talent out there. And Alan. the Great Wall of Dade. Coach DC loves to talk about the Great Wall of Dade. We'll like to see it. Alik Terry at center. He's the leader of the Great Wall of Dade. Highly recruited around the country right now, Alik is. Well, Alan's going to take the ball to the right hand side. He's got Bussy in front of him. Bussy knocks down. Somebody takes him down, and Allen goes out of bounds, and it's going to be 15 more yards because there's a piece of laundry, yellow laundry thrown out there. And um, it's going to be a personal foul. There you go, personal foul. They're going to get 15 more yards. The Miami Lakes doesn't want to start that way. Boy, oh, boy. Bussy put the wood on a corner that came up. Yeah. I mean, he hit him from the backfield. And there it goes. The ball's going to be down inside the 34-yard line. Yeah, Bussy, he, he runs out there with no fear at all. Allen's back with a single back and a 22 set. Interesting. Press box shaking. These fans are shaking the stands. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Snap is to Allen. So zone read. Gives it to Bussy up the middle. There's a hole. He busts it a little bit. He gets about four or five yards. Stopped by a host of Miami Lake players. I believe number 55. 55 would be Woodbury. Brings up second down and about four yards. Second down and five. Check that. Got Bussy back there with Edward in the backfield. Snapping the fake to Bussy. He's looking to his left-hand side. He's got a receiver that fell down. Number five, David Francis, 6'3", 190 senior. Wow, they got a host of seniors on this Hialeah T-Bridge roster. Yeah, they played last year, Ryan. They, all, they were all in this game, and they are seasoned players, and really they don't have any excuse for not putting a lot of points on the board. I don't know. We haven't been able to follow Miami Lakes, but they are uh, – they're, they're – a team that to contend with. I mean, obviously, it's a rivalry, and um, you know, we'll see what we'll see what unveils in this game. Again, Bussy in the backfield, single back in the backfield. Got Allen under center. I under like to elite. see that. And as a draw play right up the middle, Bussy picks up about three or four yards. He's close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it right there close to the 15 and a half yard line. Looks like they got fourth and about two yards. Let's see what they're going to do. I don't see any kicker coming on the field, Ryan. I think they're going for it. It looks like they're going for it. They are going for it. Bussy in the backfield. Big great wall of Dade. And Alain Alique. Uh, Allen takes it right up the middle. He cuts to the right side. He picks up the first down and more. Wow. That's how you do it. I mean, it might be like that all night long. Allen, hey, if he doesn't have it up the middle, he's going to break it outside because he has the speed to take it outside. We'll just see if the Trojans have enough speed to catch him or run him down. I love that long stride. First and 10 down inside the 20-yard line. Make it about the 19. Got single back in the backfield, 22 set with Bussy sitting back there. Give his to Bussy off the left-hand side. He's going to try to get to the edge. He makes the edge. He's down the middle, five. Touchdown, Bussy. Did he step out of bounds? No, he didn't. He got a touchdown on a 
19-yard scamper. And he is just making it look easy. He did get to the edge. Wow, there we go. First score of the game. Henry Bussey does his thing. Great play. Great play call by Mariquin. Took it down the field, got a great push with uh, that, they, that nice pass interference penalty. And um, hey, that's how you do it, get in the red zone, drive it in. Well, we got about five plays, looks like about 45 yards in about 33 seconds. Not bad for the thoroughbreds. Eight minutes. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching High School Sports on HSPN. High School Football Prime Time presented by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. The KDA Foundation is a 501c3 non-for-profit youth organization that specializes in empowering communities and providing opportunities for academic and athletic growth. We address vital issues concerning transitional phases of primary and secondary education through sports and academic advisory camps, health and wellness programs, and athletic scholarships grant and aid assistant programs for college. To find more information, to check us action. out Eight at minutes. www. Thoroughbreds take the first score a little over 30 seconds and they're leading seven to nothing nice kick it's gonna be retrieved at about the one yard line brought out here to the 20 down at about the 23 yard line Jeremy Sheriff on the tackle number 11 it's nice to see some of the key players on the what do, what do you call it, the hit squad what do, the suicide squad suicide squad Never liked the Suicide Squad. Always put me in the middle. <laughs> go down there and break the wall. All those, all those butterflies, they, they go away after the first hit. Well, here's Miami Lakes again. First down under center. Out to about their 18-yard line. They've got a 22 set as well with a single set in the backfield. And Michael Alvarez is the quarterback. Takes a snap. He's looking to his right. He sidearms it. And my goodness. Off the back. Of wow. Linebacker, number 44. Number 44. Dominique Elverson hit him in the numbers right in the back. And I'll tell you what, there was no way that ball was going to even get to that receiver. That was a great wall of uh, 44 Elverson. His back hit him as a bullseye. Well, we'll see what Highly Miami Lakes can do right here. They came out first possession, went three and out, had to kick it away to the t breads They drove it down the field, brings the score seven to nothing. We'll yeah. see what they produce right here. This young quarterback Alvarez um, kind of sidearmed that last one. Real quick throw out here to the right-hand side, slipped down. He didn't go down on his knee, but he went down that time. And they picked up maybe two yards. It's going to bring up – actually, he said he was down – when his first knee went down to the ground. So that's actually a loss of three yards. Brings up second down in about 15. Miami Lakes going the wrong direction, Ryan. They are, they are, they are backed up. But what? that's a that's a credit to the beast mode of the defense of the thoroughbreds. Yes, I know uh, in the secondary, they are hungry. You got Nico Gonzalez back there and he is licking his chops, waiting for something to come his way. Yeah, Nico's coming down one-on-one, -on -one, the slot receiver. Alvarez back, he's looking to his right. Big rush over the middle, incomplete. Not much time. They were all over him. Looked like both linebackers blitzing again on that play. Brings up a fourth down and 15 again. I don't and know. I don't know. Hope it's not like this the whole game. Ball's going to be right back into the thoroughbred's hands. They're kicking it to Myrtle. Punter's back there on the two-yard line. Wow. Snaps over to the right-hand side. He gets this one off. This isn't even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. My goodness. Wow. 
That didn't even get to the line of scrimmage. We saw this kind of punting last night between Miami, Carroll City, and uh, Booker T. I'll tell you, they've, uh, they're have they lacking on the punting skills in the 305 so far. I mean, that's the thing. You come down to these high-powered schools with, with very skilled position players on offense and defense. Where are the soccer players? <laughs> it's not soccer season right now. I know, hey, you want to take things serious. You don't want to get jacked up by one of these uh, guys on the suicide squad, but, hey. We got to get someone out here, kick it down the field, get some better field position. Well, here we go, man. The the, the thoroughbreds had the ball on Miami Lake's 27 yard lines, and Allen's is licking his chops, take a couple step drop. He's looking to the right. He's going to take off up the middle, and bam, he's going to be hit by the Mike linebacker right there, sitting there waiting for him. That's number, number four. Number four is uh, Joshua St. Joseph. Joshua St. Louis. Sorry. First down in five yards. And they're walking something off here. I didn't see the I didn't see the laundry, but that's a big one. Personal foul. Takes the ball down to the twelve yard line. Allen brings the ball up under center. He's underneath Ali with Bussy in the background. You think they're going to hit the left corner again with Bussy? They, they might. They got some size out there, number five, and he's for, going for it. Oh, my oh, goodness. He's tripped. wide open, and I'll tell you, he tripped over his own feet. Great play, but it was watch out for your strew string. Tie him up tight, young man. You've got to get to the ball. Allen got that ball out to the corner perfectly. That's a second stumble out here and it hadn't rained all day that was number five the receiver David Francis and we've got a uh, second down and goal I'm sorry second down from the 12 13 yard line and they're going to take a quick timeout as they take a timeout we too will take a timeout you're watching primetime high school sports on HSPN you're watching high school football on HSPN We're back to live action. As you can see it's uh, 6.15 on the clock. It's a second down from the 12-yard line. Moved the ball inside the 12 because of a personal foul. Allen just threw an incomplete corner route to a receiver that fell down. It's wide open. It's under center, under a leak. He's going to give it to Bussy again off the left side. Big blocks downfield. There is nobody there to pick him up. Bussy takes it 12 yards for another Hialeah Thoroughbreds. Touchdown. That was quick. And I asked you earlier, were they going to give it to Bussy over the left side? And uh, I knew they were. Going to attempt the extra point. I don't know. Got, Allen's got a holding call on the play. They did get a holding call on the play. Bringing it back. Well, they're bringing it. They're going to bring it back. I guess the block was too good. I guess it was. <laughs> hey, that corner out there looks like number 27. No, it's not 27. It's not on the roster, but he is uh, all of five foot, and he's going to have a very difficult time out there against uh, the big boy, Ruben, about six foot six. Let's see what they do. Throws over the middle. It's a touchdown. Strike. 20 yards to Bussy. Bussy all out of the over slot, the slot. Running a nice post pattern. And oh my goodness, was that nice. Very, very nice throw. Oh, they are all over him tonight. 
I don't see any laundry on the field this time, so that will be a touchdown. And they do it in a matter of about four or five more seconds. What a tack. Bussey's first score of the game. He's doing the work. Second score of the game. He's got one on the ground, and he's got one in the air. Two scores in the game. And that is great for him. I remember talking to Bussey this past spring. And uh, last year, he had a pretty bad injury to his leg and actually didn't play mo the majority of the season last year. So I know he's trying to catch up. He's playing catch up to a lot of these guys. I know he's playing with some very talented athletes that are getting highly recruited all over the nation. I know he's, uh, he's trying his best to get back out there on the field, gain his stats because he is a ball player. Um, impact player, one of the impact players of the game. Yeah, five plays, 34 yards, eight seconds. <laughs> That's fast. That is fast. And you know what? We got to give a shout out, man. We've got the JV thoroughbreds that are helping us with the camera. We've got one on a, uh, on a camera number two. We've got another one. Uh, can me the, the stats, play game stats. Uh, we've, got, we've got photographers down there that are shooting for us. And um, we've got about five or six interns that are, uh, that are getting those uh, service hours. Hey, if you're a student athlete, coach, uh, parent, player, listen, KDA, 501C3, yes, we can give service hours, and we want interns. This is called HSPN for a reason, high school production network and you can see right now ryan who we have up on the screen impact player of the game henry bussy number two as you can see what has he got two touchdowns already in the two touchdowns yeah one on the ground one in the air just a 20 yard re uh, reception on a post he caught it right out of high leah florida running back undeclared agility vision speed as you can see at the bottom you got some of his offers he is going to be one of the top running backs in the nation i can guarantee you that he is a prime-time skilled player, that's for sure. Absolutely for sure. Here goes the kick. And it's a line driver, and it's going into the end zone, so it's going to come out to the 20-yard line. And, uh, again, as I was saying, this K Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation, we've got this uh, this thing going with these interns, and um, we got some incredible young men that are taking care of this for us. I know uh, David is on the stats, and um, we've got a couple more guys down on the field taking still shots for us so you know what um, if you see a couple of wobbly camera shots this is a high school production network man <laughs> and we got them working so don't be so hard on them <laughs> no that's great kevin gottlieb gosh we go way back that name peewees that's right peewees and i coached him and I, it was kevin to stout gottlieb to stout that was a gosh, loss man. on the play big defense surrounding him number 42 which is Renee Santana, wow. And I see Nico, he got a little taste. Nico got a little piece of him too. Coming all the way from the safety position. I love it, I love it. I love being around Nico. Uh, what a great athlete, what a great kid overall. I mean, when he, when you have a chance to talk to him, he's just the overall student athlete that you want at your university. Hey, and we got Wilton up here. A highly a thoroughbred on the other camera. I want to give him a shout out. JV player for the thoroughbreds. Fine young men. Brings up second down in about 15. And I'm telling you right now, if they don't get something going, they got red shirts all over them, and it's overthrown. Number seven's got his hands out. He's got his hands out because uh, the ball is not going to be thrown to him anywhere near him. Brown, because he had coverage all over his back. But more than that, Alvarez was sitting there with three or four T-breads running him down, Ryan. I don't think they've gotten past the 20-yard line yet, unfortunately, for the Trojans. That's uh, uh, what happened last night, Carroll City. It took them three quarters to get past the 50. Yes. And that's correct. with Trayon Gray. That is a highly recruited athlete, committed to UM, actually. A little lopsided. We got a 22 set, single back in the backfield with Alvarez back there. Nico is sneaking up. Give us up the middle on a zone read. He sees some room. He's got a hole open. He's past the 40, up to the 43-yard line. 
Number biggest 20. gainer of the day. My goodness, about a 23 yard gain. Number 20 on the run. That was number 20. That was uh, Malik Shannon. Great little run up there. First down, first, first down. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to step up to the plate. And hey, if you got to pound it, let's get it done. They're going to pound you. <laughs> first and 10 from the 33 yard line. Alvarez back, single back in the backfield. Oh, They're going to pick up oh. five more yards for that one. Tony Baxter, number 90. Getting Tony a little ready to go. excited. Well, gives him another five yards, first and five. Alvarez, same set. Quick throw out here to the outside. No block at all inside, and my goodness, is he wrapped up really quick. And number 22, Raymond Bell. Seven on the reception is Romeo Brown again. And it seems like they're trying to get the ball to Romeo a lot tonight. Romeo, I actually had a chance to, when I went over to Hialeah Miami Lakes to grab some pictures and interviews. Uh, he was one of the impact players for, for Hialeah Miami Lakes, a freshman. Wow. Well, that's good stuff. He is a freshman on the field, and they are trying to get him the ball. He's going to be something to watch in these next couple years. You talk about experience, especially playing against this front wall of Hiley High School and this uh, secondary, you're going to see some big things out of this athlete soon. Well, there's so much pressure. They had a holding call. So moves them back 10 more yards. And my goodness, it's going to be um, first down and forever. Got Alvarez back. Snap is fumbled. Oh. The thoroughbreds are down on the ball. 51. And they're going to take the ball. Hiley recovers the ball. Bad snap, not that bad. The quarterback wasn't paying attention, was off his right-hand side. But I'll tell you, you give him the ball down in the 20-yard line, you know what's getting ready to happen. This team is stacked. Once again, we're at a game where we're finding out that it's dominant by one side or the other. And, and, the, and the skill players are stacked in the favor of Hialeah. The problem with these games is they came out of this game last year with a huge victory. And what they didn't do is they didn't capture on it and maintain it throughout the year, which they're more mature, a year more mature. And let's see what they can do. Alec is looking back, throwing it. Allen to the corner, number nine. That's that's number nine. That's our boy Nico Gonzalez catches a beautiful deep corner pass. And we got a window in the way. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it was the end when he caught it. Nico caught it. That was one play, I believe. Well, folks. One play, 29 yards, and once again, six seconds. David, thank you. Well, folks, we can't wait until halftime, until we get we switch sides of the field. We'll be able to bring <laughs> we got you more window. Two TDs missed. We'll be able to bring you some better camera angles. <laughs> we got we got we got more window open too. Let's see if they can make this extra point. And it looks like it's good. Thoroughbreds 21. Trojan 0. And every time they get the ball, Ryan, it's 1, 2, 3, score, 1, score, 2, score. It is. They're striking fast. Uh, you come out there. Allen, he's, uh, he's a very determined athlete. I love, I love how he's spreading it around. I love it. You got Bussy. He's got a, a rushing touchdown. He's got a receiving touchdown on a post. Then you throw a, uh, a corner. Actually, it was a wheel route to Nico. Right. And he caught it perfectly back in the corner and right over his outstretched hands. Allen, what a quarterback. And he's uh, he's he's got a great wall of date in front of him, too. Right. Give him all that time. He, dual threat at its finest. I mean, you can, you can put him up there with a the tray on Harris over at Booker T. Washington. I Absolutely. Mean, hey. Two of the top quarterbacks in the nation. Coming out of you know where, South Florida, Miami Dade. Oh, five. And you know as well as I do, being a quarterback, how important that front four, front five is in front of you, giving you that time. Well, here we go again. We might be calling this all night. Thoroughbreds kicking off again. 
And it is still the first quarter. And it's going to be not returnable. So we will get the clock synced up for you. And we'll get ready to rumble here with these guys come out to the 20-yard line. The Trojans have the ball. Ryan, they need to do something quick. They we said to. this three nights. We said this three games in a row. They need to do something quick to slow down the machine. They do. When I went out to practice the other day, it was it just started pouring down rain. I asked Coach Fuse coming, and he said, no, they need all the practice they can get, and especially against a, a high-powered team um, like the T-Breds. So hopefully they put something together. Hopefully they, they can scheme something. Well, this is an interesting set here. It looks like a bunch actually a double wing and uh, double wing gets them about zero net yardage I can't tell who had the ball on that one number 32 Ruben Gonzalez well going from a spread to the wing T you must have a big playbook yeah well it brings up second down and ten Still in the first quarter, 21 nothing. Back in that wing tee again. They're bunched up. Alvarez under center. Gives it to the running back. Ooh. And he is just 43. Shot. He is brought down hard. John Periolis ah. for about a three, four yard loss. He isn't going anywhere. That'll bring up third down in about. 10. Very difficult to see the yard markers over there. Well, they brought out this wing tee hoping that maybe they'll throw a little misdirection. But um, I know just as well as you do that these linemen are taught that misdirection, you know, they're not back there. They're not watching the running backs. They're watching they're one of those knuckles. So those linemen. Yeah. The keys. And, they got their keys and they're watching. Right, and they're checking out those guards pulling to the left, pulling to the right. So, Hey, they put uh, Romeo Brown at quarterback. Romeo Brown at quarterback. and The freshman. Looks like they uh, that's that's probably who they went to with this wing tee. They've taken a timeout. As they take a timeout, you're watching High School Sports on HSPN. What's this urging for? Reggae music. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, the wickedest rhythm in the world. Tanto Irie coming in live and hot. 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 Hialeah Miami Lakes against Hialeah Thoroughbreds. Just joined us, it's 21 to nothing, Thoroughbreds. 158 in the first quarter. They've changed quarterbacks to Romeo. They do a quick pitch, a reverse, number 82. He's got the ball out here and he's got some room. Oh, wow, he's hit hard by Alex Morales. And folks, if you just joined us, they just brought in Romeo Brown this last series and they're running a uh, double wing. They came out in a spread offense. Alvarez, they've switched it up to a double wing. And um, if they're not ready for this double wing, then they're going to gain some yardage on them. This is a young quarterback, a freshman quarterback, Romeo Brown. And it's funny. Um, when I went over to the school, highly Miami Lakes, I asked him what position. He said he had no idea what answer to give me. I said, you probably want to say athlete because if you don't know, and the coach knows, but as you can see tonight, Romeo on all sides of the field. Oh, hey, we might even see him on defense, but hey, quarterback, we'll see what he can do. Alvarez wasn't getting the job done, so. Well, he got two first downs so far. They're out to the 35-yard line. He gives to the outside. Number 20 cuts it up. That's Malik Shannon. Picks up about four yards, three yards. Coming inside of one minute of the first quarter. They're opening up a little bit, Ryan. At least they're moving the ball. They are, and it's good to see because, you know, sooner or later, Hylia T-Breds, they're going to take it away. 
And uh, last thing we want to see is another blowout. Well, the T-Breds are going to get to play a lot of players tonight, and that's important for them to build a championship caliper team year after year after year, and, and uh, you're very well aware of that because you played on one of them in right. Alcoa, Tennessee. Here we go again. Romeo Brown at quarterback and a wing T. Coming under 39 seconds. He's going to give the ball back out to his reverse over here. Number, I believe it's number six. Number nine. That's number nine, Kendrick John VA. Hey, it's working. Number six on the tackle, Alex Medina. It is working, so why change it up? Stay with it. We got a timeout. Timeout time by the thoroughbreds. And as they take a timeout, we too will take a timeout. You're watching HSPN. This timeout was brought to you by the Coral Springs Spine and Nerve Center. Providing superior health and balance through chiropractic. At Coral Springs Spine and Nerve, we focus on the cause of the issue and not the resulting factor. We meet all of our patients' expectations and beyond. Here, you're not a patient, you're family. www.coralspringsspineandnerve.com Folks, Coral Springs Spine and Nerve, they're donating lunch this uh this weekend, this Saturday, for the Booker, not Booker T, for Boyd Anderson, we want to thank Coral Springs Spine and Nerve for their generous donation. It will go to feed the student athletes of Boyd Anderson during the Keeping Dreams Alive academic mentoring session. It'll be brought to you by Pat Lowe and by Aaron Curran. Pick up of about three more yards. That's probably going to run the clock out for the first quarter. They're going to probably swap around right here where we are at the 48-yard line, so they're not going to have to run far. And they'll probably take another break here, and we'll talk about the uh, academic mentoring that's going to go on this Saturday at 1130. They are going to content to, to run it out. And as they do run it out, let me tell you that uh, Saturday, 11 o'clock, 11.30, Boyd Anderson, Lauderdale Lakes, Pat Lowe will be over there, our Director of Education, and uh, Aaron Curran and the rest of our KDA crew will be there to do some academic mentoring, the first one of the year, the first of many for this year. And Coral Springs Spine and Nerve uh, graciously gave us a donation that we will be able to buy those student athletes lunch folks if you want to get involved in a great foundation let me tell you something when we meet these student athletes we'll be meeting them in a room that is not air conditioned we'll be meeting them in a place where they need to eat to maintain the the, the to get the knowledge they have to have food in their stomach so if you have a heart for this and you're ready to do this we do this for free for the athletes and uh, we spotlight the athletes because it's important for us to be able to let them know that there's better choices in life that they can make. But there's people that got their back and people that seriously have their back and they get it. And we go in there and do academic mentoring. We go in there and play, do playing the recruiting game. And, um, and it's the Cobras. Boyd Anderson, our boys, followed them six live broadcasts last year. And if you want to make a donation, all you have to do is go to kdafoundation.org and click Donate. And it's as easy as that. And I'll tell you what, we wouldn't be doing this tonight if we didn't have the great volunteers that we have. So there's another button on that homepage. It says Volunteer Form. You can click that as well and volunteer to help us with all the things we do. If your passion are kids and your passion is giving back, then you need to be a part of the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation team. And I just want to give a shout out. Last night at the Booker T. Washington game, had two lovely young ladies come out to help us out. Keisha and Gabriella, thank you so much. Took some of our still shots. We're on the field in the rain, uh, thanks to Mr. Bloom over there, TV production teacher. Um, Double wing. Go ahead, Ryan. I'm sorry. I can't, can't wait to get involved more. Uh, we will be following Booker T. Washington throughout the season, not only with the broadcasting, but we will be doing academic mentoring as well um, through our foundation, Keeping Dreams Alive, uh, to get in there with Coach Ice Harris and the Tornadoes. It's just always a great opportunity to be around the kids whenever we get a chance to mentor them 
to teach them how to play this game. And uh, we'll be looking forward to it. Well, the uh, Trojans went four and out, three and out, and uh, Romeo Brown tried to run that double wing, and and uh, running back uh, Malik Shannon didn't make the edge, actually lost yards, and they... Um, they had good momentum. They did. They really did, and they've got to maintain that momentum. But, hey, they got a freshman quarterback, so I'm not sure how much time they get. There's going to be a penalty here against the T-Breds. A uh, five-yard penalty. I'm not sure what was called. I know Coach Berman does not like that one bit. Uh, they're going to punt it again. They just moved up. Punters back at the 40-yard line, and I believe that's uh, probably on the ground. It's almost blocked. Barely gets it off. Taking a bad bounce. Somebody from the Miami Lakes, there you go, need to get on it. About a 27-yard punt down the field. Brings it out to about the uh, 28. It'll be the second quarter, the first time the thoroughbreds will have the ball in this quarter. And um, they've got a little more distance to get to the end zone, but this is about the spot right here, Ryan, where, um, gosh, it was a pretty close game, and uh, Allen was being chased around the pocket, and it was precisely right about the same spot. He took off coming this way and then uh, cut back across the field for about 75, 78 yard touchdown when it blew the game wide open, so. Yeah, we'll see what he does. He's been working with Bussy a lot uh, this past quarters. We'll see if he gives some of his guys some love. Under center with a fullback and a tailback. He oh, fakes it. A lot of boot rank around his left side. He picks up five or six yards. I'm not even sure he didn't even make a fake. Got well, he faked the pitch to the right side. Okay. And, uh, One of that old school plays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Had him going right, and he took off. A reverse pivot, backed out to uh, a bootleg to the left, picks up about six yards, and brings up about second and uh, three. Picked up seven yards. Ameriquin might just be pulling out all of his tricks. Test him out tonight. He's got Bussy back there, tailback. He's going to pitch it to him this time. He's going to try to make the right side. Great block out here in front of him. Bussy picks it up down to the 50. He's down to the 40, down to the 30, down to the 20. They take him down to the 12, 13-yard line. Henry Bussy goes on a 40-yard scamper, and there's a penalty marker down. Let's see what the call is. It's down here at the end of the play. It was probably going to be a clip. I think it was against number eight on Hialeah. Reuben St. John. They're working hard, but they're working too hard. Yeah. You so can't. They're going to bring it back down and nullify this. Can't have that happen. And I know, once again, Coach Berman, that just riles him up because I know after talking to him, he is all about discipline. Well, it didn't bring it. It brought it back from the, uh, it was a spot foul. So um, from where he went out of bounds, brings the ball inside the uh, 32, 33 yard line. And. It's her second play from scrimmage. Let's see how many plays it takes him this time. Offset backfield. Got 22 back there with him. That's Raymond Bell. Pitches to Bussy again. He's bringing it back to the left. He cuts Ooh. back up the middle. And oh my goodness. He works hard. But if he had gotten to the edge, he had Allen. He had a whole host of blockers out there. But he cut it back to the middle. He still picked up six or seven yards. Bussy is on a mission tonight. And not only tonight, but we will. See, I guarantee you, we'll see this throughout the season. Like I said, he's he's playing catch up with all these other guys. You know, they got an opportunity to come out last season. Brings up second down and uh, three yards. You got Bussy and Bell back there again. Split backfield this time. I think Coach DC is mixing it up. I'm not sure if he's calling the game today or if it's Merrickwin down there. Well, I see Merrick when he's got the playbook in his hand. He's out there scheming. I know DC's Bussy's in his in ear, though. Gives the bell. He takes off the left side. Gets the first down and more. Little decoy out there with Bussy running outside. But he does pick up the first down. Brings it. Looks like the Trojans are going to take a timeout to try to slow down the thoroughbreds. Man, you're watching High School Prime Time, brought to you by Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. This is HSPN. 
This timeout was brought to you by Smart Programs. Smart Programs are free academic mentoring and sports training camps. Smart Programs provide awareness seminars, tutoring, and training, including certified teachers, coaches, role models, and community leaders. Available for local schools and organizations. www.kdafoundation.org You're watching High School Football on HSPN. Eight forty-two on the clock. It's second quarter. T breads up twenty-one nothing. They're threatening again inside the twenty-five yard line. Pitches to Bussy. Bussy's going to throw the ball. No, the, oh. I'm sorry. It's a snap out here. It's a touchdown. Nico to Nico. What am I thinking? He was in an offset, and he rolled out, threw the ball thirty yards. Nico is in the corner again. Touchdown. T-Breads. Wow. Love seeing Nico on both, play on both sides of the ball. Just a very talented athlete overall. Smart kid. Knows how to get open. Great catch in the end zone. Oh, that was 58 yards on five plays. And that was done in about 14, 14 seconds. My goodness. Thanks, David. Well, catch the extra point, and uh, David's doing a great job. David's doing a great job. Give me play-by-play. -play. Yardage, another intern here, T-Bread's JV player. Coach, you can be proud of him. He's doing a good job. So is Wilton up here. He's got it down. And if he's a receiver, he's doing all right. His hand stopped shaking. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 8.33. T-Breads are up 28 to nothing early in the second quarter. Ryan, I'm not sure. You know, this thing could get really out of hand or you can start playing a lot of your players, but you're not going to hold them back. I don't know. 27 zip. Uh, I feel like we're looking at a repeat of what happened last night. It's just less penalties last yeah. night. And no rain. No rain. Yeah. And actually AC. <laughs> AC. No rain. We got this uh, <laughs> got this window right in the way, which is, yeah. Hey, cool. we're, not, we're, we're not worried about it. As long as that AC's working, I'm working. Traz Powell, folks, <laughs> is probably a stadium as old as this rivalry. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful stadium. Um, if you're not familiar with Dade County football, 305, they go to uh, to stadiums, four or five stadiums throughout the county, whereas in 954 in Broward County, they literally have high school stadiums. So that's why it's such a big rivalry out here, and a lot of the games are played at Traspal, and several of the games of the year are played at Sun Life Stadium where the Miami Dolphins play as well. And Mylander Stadium. Park. Mylander right now. Yep. Wow. We're in what Mylander. A, what a nice facility. Right in the middle of Hialeah, and this is the home stadium for the teams that play in this area, especially these two. And what's interesting is is that Hialeah is only about four blocks from here, and they walk to the stadium. That's a deep kick. That might go through the uprights. Not quite, but that was a very deep kick. And, Ryan, they do have a tradition when they play here. They walk from the school to the stadium. Yes, I, you were exactly right, actually, when I was setting up. They marched right in. Hey, uh, it was it was interesting because they didn't have the gate open. Uh, I don't think they have many people work in the park today. Well, before the game started, and I could hear as I'm setting up, Coach Berman and all the cheerleaders yelling at someone to open the gate. <laughs> well, Romeo's back in there. It seems like they're going to stick with this uh, double wing and get this kid in the game and get him matured up, and this may be the future here for the for the Trojan. And uh, they're going to run this double wing inside 
trap and he's going to get nothing maybe two or three yards but I think they're trying to going to take their uh, chances now and, and try to develop this young freshman yeah and it's not a bad idea um, not a bad way to start it out Alvarez is uh, 10th grade so you know you you you've got two very very young quarterbacks and you're going to see which one's going to work. And so far today, the one that's got the most yardage is, uh, is, is Romeo, and he's out here running that double wing. And I think Romeo's maybe the faster one of the two. It's a reverse. And, oh, brings it back to the backside, brings it to the 40. He may break it to the 50, to the 40, down to the 30. My goodness gracious, number 80 takes a reverse. All the way down, Russell. Gerard all the way down to the 28 yard line. Hello on a double reverse from the double wing formation. And I'm telling you, these guys, I didn't see who was trying to run him down because I was checking the roster because I haven't called his name tonight, Ryan. But well, they had Meek. to be in a full stride to catch him. Yeah. Well, good thing Chris Meek, number four, was out there, hawked him down. Uh, probably had a, a great angle on him. But uh, it looked like he was going all the way. He was digging it, and in that corner was coming across, and he was putting everything into it just to catch him. I like that. Give us right up the middle to the fullback. Picks up about four yards, five yards, about four yards. And uh, big fullback looks like he's number th 32, and that is a Ruben Gonzalez. Well, we might see something right here. On T-Bread's 25-yard line, Second down and about six yards, seven yards. You know, we're uh, got still got seven minutes. If they can get something on the board, they could slow them down a little bit. I'm not sure if they're going to slow down the offense, but they're going to have to have a shootout. I'm not sure. And let me tell you something. As I'm watching number seven, Romeo, come back on the field, he looks tired. Giving it to the outside, number eight, trying to get around the corner. Yes, he looks tired. Running back and forth. To the sideline trying oh to get the play. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't think they prepared. No. No, that wasn't a, uh, any gain. It's going to be up third down and three. And, yeah, Ryan, you're right. He's running gassers now, and that's the last thing he needs to do. Against the T-Breds, um, they're going to punish him anyways. Yep. And do additional gassers. Mm. And you're right. He's dragging it already. He is. He's walking heavy. Head's cocked back. We'll see, though. We'll see how tough he is. He's only a freshman. Remember that. Probably 14 years old. Blitz on the play. Give us to the outside. You had Jermaine Sheriff on the blitz. Just about grabbed the snap of the ball. And it was a one-yard gain. Brings up fourth down at about two. And they are obviously going for this. Down at the 20-yard line. Number nine was on the carry, Kendrick Janvier. Another sophomore, very young team. Very few seniors on this team. Well, as you look at Kylie Atibra's roster, I mean, I look down and it's all seniors. Well, folks, they're going to take a timeout. We're going to take a time out. You're watching high school football primetime on HSPN. High School Game Day brought to you by HSPN High School Production Network. The High School Production Network is the number one high school sports broadcast network in the nation, bringing you high school sports and events by the high school student for the high school student. HSPN is in place to provide internships for all high school students that have a passion for broadcasting. HSPN is providing opportunities for students to use their passion to not only pursue a great college education, but to endure real-life experiences through a viable entity. To find out more information on HSPN, check us out at www.hsbnsports.com. Back with you, 525 on the clock. Thoroughbreds up 28 to Trojans, nothing. But thoroughbreds have second down, I mean fourth down with two yards. 
And the freshman quarterback, Romeo, brings him up. And let's see if they're going to be able to pull off this fourth down. Called a timeout. See what they could do. And they just Offsides. jumped off sides. And that's going to cost them. It's going to be fourth and seven now. Wow. That'll hurt. There's a new quarterback in, new cadence. You don't know how much work he gets during the week? Well, maybe that's why he couldn't give me an answer when I asked him what position he played. <laughs> maybe he plays more than one position. Fourth down and seven now. They're going to run the same play. It's going to be a Romeo keeper. He's going to try to get to the left side. And number 42 is not letting him get anywhere. Renee Santana going to have anything to do with it. And that is a turnover on downs. And that is not a good thing for the Trojan. And you're giving it to a guy you're running. Look at Look at it. Look at Romeo going off the field. Yeah, he, he's he's walking because he can't even make it off the field, and um, he's hurting now. He is. He's hurting. So they might have to put Alvarez back in the game. Well, the T breads are ready to go, but there's no uh, Trojans on the field. Still got 5:18 left in the second quarter before halftime. Maybe coach is over there giving him another pep talk. I didn't see a timeout. But we got a great crowd below us. If you can see the camera shaking, I know when we go to our other camera's angle. You're going to enjoy halftime. Yeah, we got a packed stadium. You're going to enjoy halftime because both of these teams have big bands. Good bands, too. Highly in Miami Lakes, not so packed. No, last year it was packed. They were packed over here and got walloped, and they stayed through the final gun of the game. But look at that quarter of the stadium over there is, takes up the band members. But we got first and 10 at the 22-yard line with Bussy in the backfield with Allen. Looked like a little movement, but he gives up the middle to Bussy. He's banging it up the middle. It's up and to the 40-yard line, 45-yard line. Look he makes him. it out to the 50-yard line. My goodness, what a beautiful 30-yard scamper. Someone's been in the weight room this offseason. Yes, sir, he has. Nice little 30-yard scamper, indeed. And he's only standing 5'9", 169, out there dragging people around. I love it. I love it. Great run, Henry. Doing a lot of those squats. Out here at the 50-yard line, he gets it back to Bussy at the middle. He breaks it out the left-hand side. He's down to the 45, down to the 44-yard line. And a lot of red jerseys pushing some people around up there. And Bussy's going to come out, take a breath. Coming in for him is number 22, which is Raymond Bell. Switch him up. Better get going. You'll have delay of game called. Spre Allen at quarterback. Spreading him out. He's looking to his right-hand side. He throws it over here to the right. He gets it number one. Good hit on the outside. Picks up the first down. Down to about the 30-yard line. That was Myrtle. Pick up of about 15 yards. Beautiful catch. Picked up another five yards. Now, what do you think the game plan is right here for high layer T-breads? Well, game plan is stay in the game, finish. Right. You know, no injuries. Right. And let's don't get too sloppy and, and get your heads up. Let's see what you're made of. Got a 22 set single back in the backfield. Gives it to the tailback. No, nope, Allen's, Allen's got it. Allen's got They faked me out down to about the 16-yard line. Oh, my. <laughs> Almost took it the distance. Take me out. Now what are they calling? A hold. Allen almost picked up. Oh, he definitely picked up the first down, but it's going to be a holding. And they are going to definitely move him back. You've got Nico coming back in the game. And guess what? Nico's coming in. What play is Nico coming in with? Oh, he, <laughs> hey, wheel they, route? He might. <laughs> we might meet him right back at the corner of the end zone again. 
Well, he's going to line up wide to the top side. Well, wherever he is, he's going to make a play, and I know Allen's looking out for him. Yep, and he's got Medina out there with him. Actually, uh, Medina comes to the other side. He's got Myrtle out there with him. And snap the ball. He's coming inside, back outside. He throws it to the corner of the other side. Wide open in the end zone. Oh. Under through number five, David Francis. Allen would like to have that ball back. You know he would like to have that ball back. Right off his fingertips. Oh, it was a short throw. You gotta go up for it. Francis was wide open, sitting there. You know, not every ball is gonna be perfect. No. Nope. And when you give an opportunity like that to your wide receiver, you gotta go up and you gotta get it. I mean, watching that, he got up in the air, but he didn't really reach for it. He let it come to him, and exactly what happened. Defender got a, got a piece of it, incomplete pass. Well, brings up second down from the 35-yard line. They've got Nico out wide, top side, and let's see if he goes deep in the corner to Nico this time. Nope, the give is going to be up the middle. Number 22 picks up five, six, seven, eight yards. Fumble. That's Bell, and he did uh, fumble. Let's see know. what they're going to call it. Uh, they're calling it down. They're calling down on contact. It looks like he's close to the first down marker. Let's see where they're going to mark the ball. Ruled down by the ground. And it looks like it's enough for the, uh, actually not the first down. They had a loss on the play because of a penalty. It brings up third down at about eight yards. Still got Nico on the top. Francis on the bottom. He's looking to the right-hand side again to Francis, but he throws it short here, catches it. Number one is making a big move to the inside, Myrtle, and he gets down inside the 15-yard line. First down for the Thoroughbreds. They'll have the ball inside the 15-yard line. Coming under two minutes. I'm just wondering what the score would look like without all those penalties. <laughs> well, is he going to throw it to Nico out here? He's got a lot of yardage out there. He fakes a give. No, he's going to take it himself down to the 10 to 5. It. Touchdown, Allen. Runs it in from the 14-yard line. Made it look easy. Faked it up the middle to Bell. Faked the zone read. Kept the ball. And they score once again. I can tell you he wanted it. He definitely wanted that ball. A I think long he, strider, isn't he? I think he had it in his head before that play that he was taking the ball. I think so, too. Like he had something to prove. <laughs> 34 points. Well, with Treon Harris down the street, he does have some, some stiff competition with, uh, with quarterback. Kick is up. Kick is good. 140 left in the second quarter. Thoroughbreds go up 35 to nothing. And it could get messy. It already is messy. It is. But he's spreading it out. Great game. It is 35 Thoroughbreds, zero Trojans. They brought in a new quarterback, Romeo Brown. Freshman, probably 14 years old. He is dying out there. Well, we've got uh, stats here from David. Thank you, David. Seven plays, 82 yards, and they did that in about three minutes and 50 seconds. Thank you, David. That's how I like to see. You know, that, like I said before, I would want. I wonder what it would look like if there were no penalties thrown on the t bread side. I mean, they've. I want to say we haven't kept track, but I want to say about six. Yeah. So far, stop the clock. Actually. Um, it may have worked out better without him. Run the clock. Maybe yeah. they'll run out of time. Well, the kickoff from the 40 yard lines, bringing the young Romeo Brown back in. The young man's got about four minutes to rest. Fumbles the ball at the one yard line. He better pick it up. Takes it out to the right hand side, and there's a big hit out there up to about the 26 yard line. And who was that that laid on the wood? 
special team player. Oh, with 127 left. Let's see what the Trojans have. I don't know. Hey, that wing T. It was working when they first brought it in, but I think defense, they uh, they came up with something that's they put it away. But, I mean, these guys are tired. Romeo's tired. They got 127. 131. Excuse me. Yeah, that was Myrtle that made the big hit. I'm sorry. Yeah, Myrtle that made the big hit. It was Kendrick Javier. Javier. And Romeo is up there in double wings. Going to give it to the back. Coming around the left-hand side. There is absolutely nowhere to go. A host of... T-Breads bringing him down, and it looks like number 47 getting off the pile. There is no 40, number 42, Renee Santana on that tackle with about three or four other T-Breads as well. And it looks like um, Romeo and the coach for the Miami Lakes Trojans are going to be content to uh, run this thing down all the way to the end. Folks, stay with us because we got a nice halftime show with plenty of highlights from this year's Tour of Champions. You'll get to see some of the top players in the nation. Romeo's going to take it around the right side and he is just going to be hit hard. And the clock is going to remain running. We're going to stop it right there. Stay with us. We've got a bunch of uh, audio, video that's going to show you that uh, uh, Tour of Champions with the Hialeah T-Breads. Ryan spent a lot of time down here uh, Coach DC is there, and then uh, we'll come back in and catch some of these bands. And uh, if you got a time during halftime, go over to kdafoundation.org. Check us out. Check out who we are. Uh, we love we love volunteers. Uh, we love uh, donations. Uh, we've got a great donation to pay for the food this Saturday for the Board Anderson Cobra, keeping dreams alive. Academic mentoring from. Coral Springs Spine and Nerve. We thank you for that. Well, third down. Doesn't really matter. We're going to get that clock going again. And uh, they'll be content for the T-Breads not to score again. Gives right up the middle. Picks up a few. And this is probably going to be the... No, they're top, stopping the clock. Stopping the clock for a um, first down... Trojans and they're wanting to crank it back up and let's see if they're going to crank it up we've got to time this with the timekeeper oh they call the timeout because they don't they don't go with the referee all the time they're on their own pace yeah they are they are and it's uh, it's interesting well, they got a timeout here with 28.7 seconds. Interesting, Ryan. Yeah. You're down by uh, 35 points. I'm not sure who called that timeout, but um, I don't think it would be the Trojans. I don't think so either. Got those bright red jerseys for sure. They are looking nice. Flashy. Right here underneath us. Hope you're enjoying the live stream broadcast and the great work done by Kevin Gottlieb on the camera one and Wilton on camera two this has got to be the last play of the first half and they're taking their time doing it brought Alvarez back in single back in the backfield and he's throwing the ball deep over here to the left-hand side. It's almost picked off by Nico Ooh, Gonzalez. Nice little throw yeah. by Alvarez. And Nico, he is he's pretty upset about that. You know, I, I if it if it was me second half after seeing that, I would probably rotate these quarterbacks. Oh yeah. Just to keep uh just keep the third bets honest. Because that'll keep him off the quarterback if you're throwing balls deep like that. Most definitely. Especially in two, three seconds when he's offset. And he'll keep Romeo. Give him some time Give to him recuperate. Him. Alvarez is under center now. Single back in the backfield, 22 set. 
Give is up the middle and he is hit hard and quick. That will be the last play of the first half. Folks, we're excited to bring high school sports to you on Thursday night. We had Wednesday night. We're going to be bringing it to you next week again on Thursday night when Booker T. Washington plays Jackson down at Traz Powell Stadium. You'll get once again to see the number one team in the nation. This is halftime. You're watching high school primetime on HSPN brought to you by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. We'll be right back with you. moments moments under the lights when I make a big hit moments when the crowd roars after I score when I make a big hit moments when the crowd roars after I score I am one of few the few that will carry the load of the team the few that separate themselves from the weak the few that sacrifice everything to be the greatest I am not common I am not ordinary. I am within a group of people considered to be the best. in the nation. There are over 10 million high school student athletes that graduate each year. Only 0.08% of these student athletes that graduate receive full scholarships. started with the dream and now it's up to us to keep it alive if you're sitting out there and you're wondering you have to start that process education comes first you never know what you chose gave me a better opportunity to make it in life live your 
dreams. How far are you willing to go? back finally be able to get back after it again and go for the main goal get to the state championship leading up to this it's been kind of aggravating you wanted to be here already you in school you kind of bored because it's not football practice yet you're not a full pass yet so now you're here it's, now you're ready you can't wait to get on the get on the I meeting today because of the weather we on the court so can't wait to get on the court as a team I think last year our seniors we really didn't have the, the leadership we were supposed to have so we we beat teams nobody had us to beat and we lost the teams we should have destroyed. So it was a lot of not being not being disciplined and not being led at the right at, right, at the right times. I would say starting off slow against New Orleans, losing by that many, and then in the district game against North Miami, losing to them. Nobody expected that at all. Nobody. We should have we we should have gone undefeated. I mean, the positives we found out we'll be we're gonna be real good this season. We found we we got a lot of guys that that know can make plays for this upcoming season and. This season could be one of the one of the record books. Dominate everybody. The team to get closer as a family. Everybody's gonna work hard here, regardless. We're gonna work hard, but everybody have that bond and to be a family because you have to be a family to go far. Dominate everybody. Discipline and leadership and dominate everybody. My expectations is just um, looking ahead and going to the playoffs. You know. We didn't go to the playoffs for like two years three, I think, and that, that really hurts me. And then I have to be a leader and just go to playoffs and win state champion. Well, I'm already uh, a leader on this team. And for me to do that, it just, you know, go through the motions. Not go through the motions, but like, you know, just take away everything you try to give me and become that leader they want me to be. I went through a lot of struggles. I've been, I've been too quiet with the team. Like, I just been, I need, to, I just need to be a vocal leader. And that's a problem I really have, but I'm going to work on it this year. And that's what I need to do. I think all of us just went through the motions and not, we, we, we was focused, but we wasn't that focused to do what we had to do. So, yeah, this year, I'm going to just get in the head and just do what we got to do this year. Back in um December, you know, I felt like UM was giving me a lot of attention. It really was. And I was just talking to you about UM. I just kept going over there, visits, you know, just watching a spring practice. And then and finally, on February 13, they threw the offer at me. It was, really, it was really a surprise because I didn't see it coming. So I was sitting in class, and then they just told me that I had an offer from UM. And I was like, I'm sitting in class like, wow, did they offer me just now? And I was surprised about it. And then it just went great from there. I mean, all I, all I did was just shake my head because I didn't see it coming. Like I said, I was sitting in class and my phone just kept vibrating, kept vibrating tweets from text messages to phone calls. And then I was like, wow, and it was just a surprise for me. I mean, in person, I'm, re I'm really quiet in person. If you see me in person, I'm really quiet. And then I'm always having my headphones on. I'm just in my own little world. But when it comes to football, I'm going to play around, joke around. But when it's time to go to work, I'll go to work. I just go through everything the coaches tell me to do and I do it. And I just go hard through everything I do. I'm going to always try to be the first person when running. Bussy right here is faster than me, but at, at the time we race, I try to be Bussy at times. Though, so, yeah, that's what I try to work on. Uh, me being a leader and going on playoffs and hopefully to the state championship. It came from our, our former coach, he's at Northwestern now, um, George Stubbs. Like, he made sure like, that we was always the best, so we call ourselves the Great Wall of Day. Not the Good Wall of Day, but the Great Wall of Day. Why, why, did it, why is that their name? Why are they the Great Wall of Day? Like, what makes them so special that they're the Great Wall of Day? But like, we outwork, we feel like we outwork everybody, so we can consider ourselves great. With the team, I felt the leaders didn't step up like how they were supposed to. Uh, even, even us, even as, as, as sophomores, as, I mean juniors, we, we were supposed to step up, but we didn't. And there was a lack of discipline. Like we, had, we lacked a lot of discipline. And now that we're the seniors, we're making sure we had that discipline and everything that we need so it could be successful this season. Family, having that bond. I feel that we have that bond already, but we need to like become even closer. 
and everybody works hard regardless. Everybody puts in that put, puts in that extra effort. So this should be something great. This come upcoming spring, we should we should destroy everything that we should. State championship, go far, go as far as we can. Now, what is it gonna take to get to that state championship? That's what the people wanna know. Tell the people. Putting in that extra work, getting done in classroom, just get it done and be disciplined, and then everything will handle itself. You know, someone put my hamstring. I couldn't do nothing. Stuff to come back from injury like that. Yes. So how how's it feel now? He's 100 percent right now. 100 percent yes. ready to go. Yes. Now I only played the last three games of the season, so that was a struggle for me. And when I came back, pretty much the lack of leadership, it was less vocal, and the seniors were just like going through the motions, and it wasn't in it like all the other classmates and stuff. Drag up offers, be a leader in my team. There's as much charge as I can. Academically, I have a 3.2 GPA right now. On my expectation this year, I want to be a leader. Um, I passed running back Seymour. He had a record at the school, so I'm trying to break his record this year. And I'm trying to get 2,000. The day in life, like they say, just to do it. I just do it like Nike. <laughs> yeah, I just do it. There are over 1,800. The Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation is a youth organization that specializes in empowering communities and providing opportunities for academic and athletic growth. KDA just partnered up with University of Miami for these community-based projects as far as the athletes coming out and, and talking about athletics becoming bigger, faster, and stronger, and KDA talking about becoming a good, a great student. Can you share with us uh, the recent partnership with KDA and the city of Pompano Beach and bringing these type of activities? Well, I think Keeping Dreams Alive is doing an awesome thing. I mean, we noticed that from the jump, and we think this could be a, a partnership for a long time just because of what you guys believe and what you stand for, and you know, you kind of correlate with what we do, so it's awesome what you guys do in this community and that's the number one thing is to give back to these kids and let them understand that we're here for them you know anything we could do to give back you know we're here so KDA is doing an awesome thing and we're just happy that we're partnering with you guys to do that as well yeah you know it's great to uh, see the kids in the summertime uh, have this opportunity at this beautiful facility um, with your organization and uh, just having that sense of giving back because uh, a lot of times you know the kids sitting around during the summer and uh, to see the collegiate level come back give back to the community, have you guys put this on for the kids. It's really special. All ages too. Uh, you got preschool kids uh, working with college kids and the high school kids pushing themselves. Uh, it's a really neat opportunity for everybody. My name is Steven Morris. Turn the music up just a little bit. I'm under pressure. Let me get it. I mean, we got a senior on 18. It's all or nothing. It's, you know, it's all or nothing. We got These are the best kids that I've ever had in 29 years of coaching. Going into my. I'm on a mission. They probably think I'm missing. Some screws, but it's these Coach. three nails they, that the keep me driven. <laughs> With me. I know I that I'm gonna fail, fail and ain't a wish in the world that can wish a boy well. Say my expectation is not to let the quarterback throw a deep pass at all. He could he could throw it short. But I'm, I'm, I'm this year it's, it's different and I feel like we can really do something.
living up so and to play it all my be. He never meant to have me and problems keep coming at me. I wanna walk with Jesus, but my legs We should destroy everything that we I'm hoping prayer works cause these walls can't hear me. Come on. So I drop to my knee and I scream with my mind. I tell them these walls can't hear me. It's not only to win a playoff game. Our goal is to be there December 16th or 17th to be in the big dance. That's our goal. High School Football Prime Time presented by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. The KDA Foundation is a 501c3 non-for-profit youth organization that specializes in empowering communities and providing opportunities for academic and athletic growth. We address vital issues concerning transitional phases of primary and secondary education through sports and academic advisory camps, health and wellness programs, and athletic scholarships grant and aid assistant programs for college. To find more information, check us out at www kdafoundation.org train every day for these moments moments under the lights when i make a big hit moments when the crowd roars after i score i am one of few the few that will carry the load of the team the few that separate themselves from the weak that sacrifice everything to be the greatest. I am not common. I am not ordinary. I am within a group of people considered to be the best. Question and one question only. Are you among the elite? Here is your chance to prove yourself. Only the elite will survive. University of Miami, born and raised in Miami, Florida. I think you gotta be a level-headed person. Uh, my mom and dad do a great job of making sure that I'm always on top of my thing, especially with academics and when it comes to schoolwork, I gotta put that first and uh, definitely preparing for games and throughout game weeks, I really holler at my coaches, make sure that we're on the same page with each other. And you know, it's just really good on time management. All right, and last but not least, we deal with a lot of student athletes out there in pursuing a scholarship of a graduation in college. What advice you got for any student athletes uh, pursuing college? To just keep working, just to always make sure that, you know, staying positive with your coaches, uh, communicating with them, having the opportunity to do the right thing on and off the field, and the coaches in college will recognize you. That made us a lot closer and understanding about dreams. Right. If they want to keep their dreams alive, the education part is the thing that gets it done. Yeah, Football good. sets it up, they look at it, but if I don't have the grades to be able to solidify it, nothing changes, nothing happens. So with that, that really made us stronger on the field. Those guys start seeing themselves having good grades, understanding that, then they realize that I can make it. I can get a chance to get out of here and change my life. Make sure all us young student athletes, the most important thing for you to do is make sure you understand that the education is paramount. That's the key to this whole deal. You know, we can talk about football and everybody can talk about how good you can run, how fast you can run, but it's a, it's a million guys out there can run just as fast. And the only thing that can set the difference between anybody is the transcript. transcript. You're watching high school football on HSPN.
back to live action. Well, you've been in live action. We're back into the booth now. We took a little break and a little time out. Hope you enjoyed those videos that you got to see from the Tour of Champions and also uh, some of the things from Booker T. Washington. Uh, we did all that. Ryan did all that this spring. Uh, we're going to get a, another kickoff here with uh, the Trojans. No points on the board. I don't even know if they broke 100 yards. I know that the t Breads are, uh, are, are ready to go, ready to roll. And um, 35 points, well, let's hope that they uh, put in some put in some fresh players. Yeah, hopefully. Ryan. 35 <laughs> zip. Put in some new players. Anyways, we're excited to be back with you. It's third quarter and um, high kick. Very returnable. It's fumbled. And, boy, big hit put on number 22, which is Raymond Bell. Because he bobbled that kick, going to have the ball at about the 21-yard line. And we will get this thing rolling for you. And let's see what we got going on here. Well, Glenn, what do you think they, uh, Coach Longhorn told those guys coming out of halftime? Told them, look, fellas, you know, uh, we know it's a tough road. This is also uh, 63 years of tradition here. Right. This isn't our first rodeo, so man up and pull your pants up, and let's get out there and finish this game. Allen's back, a little crossing pattern, nice post pattern. Number eight, which is Ruben St. Jean, St. John, his first reception tonight, first call tonight. I'd like to see what this offense is going to produce right now. Coming in 35 points. Let's see some progressions. Let's see some catches. I want to see him move it around the field. Allen gives it up the middle to Bussy. Bussy taking off. He's down the middle, Ooh. down to the 30, 40-yard line, inside the 40-yard line. Picks up about 30 yards on a scamper. My goodness. He great is move. due to bust one, Ryan. I can feel it. Gosh, great move by Bussy. Strong running back. Strong, impressive running back. He's determined. He is very determined. Every interview I have with him. He's hungry. He is. He's very hungry. Nice young man, too. Well, it looks like they got all the starters in. I think they may have changed up the receivers. Maybe not. Maybe that's just the first pass to them. You got single back in the backfield, Bussy. With Allen's going to take the ball around to the... Right side, he's left side, he's smart to get out of bounds. He loses about one yard. Now I'm sure while well, they're still having to run the ball. But, you know, you give them another uh, full quarter and then probably uh, bring in some of the, the, the second and thirds. So uh, just in case, you know what? We don't want to wish anything bad on anybody, but... That's the way it is. Keep him healthy, and he's got his stats, and he's ready to roll. Yeah, give him a chance to play. Get in the fire. Um, get some experience. As you can see, you know, we got a bunch of seniors on this field offensively and de defensively that will be leaving next year. So we got to get some experience from these younger guys. Allen's back, two-step drop. He's throwing it deep down the left-hand side. He's got number five down there. What a incredible catch by Francis. My goodness, and they're calling it incomplete. He was out of bounds. The ref was a long ways from Francis, and I do believe he might have had a foot in bounds, but that ref was over past the hash mark. What a fantastic catch. He was in double coverage, Ryan. Yeah, it was. Um, Francis, wow, um, got a great stride length. He, got, he really got down there. Number two. Covered by White, number two, and Johnson, number 24. Brings up third down and about one. Boy, Allen has a beautiful touch. He does. He does, and that's why it's one of the biggest reasons why he is being recruited by some of the top universities and colleges in the nation. He's back with a two-step drop again. He throws it quickly out there to number eight, which is Ruben St. Jean. St. Jean. 
And uh, Wilton, if you want to correct me on that, you can. St. Jean? Okay, good. I got one of the JV football players up here. And we've got some uh, kids up here that are uh, uh, kids on the team that are from all over the place, you know, Caribbean. And I just want to make sure he had his name spelled with the with it all together is pronouncing it right. Trips to the bottom side. Allen's looking to the single coverage to the right. It's St. Jean again. He's wide open. And he doesn't have enough, I don't think, for the first down, Ryan. He's got to be aware of where that first down marker is. Yeah, I don't think he has it. And they call a timeout, but they're still running the clock. A few more seconds. They didn't get the first down. They didn't. St. Jean has to know. When he's running a route that's only three yards, that he gets at least four. And um, that wasn't a very heads-up place play by uh, St. Jean. And he is uh, he's a senior. He's one of those seniors. Yeah, you got to know those things. With with the type of experience these kids have and the type of offense this is, you, you got to know where you are on the field. Exactly. A little surprising. And it was down there right next to the yard markers, too. Well, they got young Romeo Brown back in. Double wing formation. One thing is for sure, it's going to run the clock. It and is. he gets two or three tough ones. Number 42 gets him in his grass. Santana once again. Hopefully they make some plays here. They need to. They need to do something. They got to get motivated. Got some big linemen, a right tackle. The Lakes is a big boy. Looks like he's got to be close to 300 pounds. And Romeo under center again. He just Fumble. hands off to the air ball, and he's in big trouble. He's going to be taken down. He gets up, up, goes up to about two, three yards. Penalty marker down. A lot of stuff going on on the other side of the field. He absolutely pitched the ball to the air. No back there. And uh, looks like 42 was there on the hit. And we've got a personal foul, looks like, against the Trojans, too. So it's going to back them up another 15 yards. Wow. Well, when it falls apart and you've got a young team, you've got to fall back on discipline. And if you don't have that discipline together... You're going to have this kind of stuff happen when a game gets lopsided and they start feeling sorry for themselves. Right. It doesn't look too good for uh, HML right now. They uh, they came out of halftime probably with a great game plan, but it's just it's not coming through for them tonight. you got a young quarterback, freshman, coming in and out with Alvarez. And like you said earlier, um, they need to get these guys in and out. Romeo, um, Alvarez, they need to switch them in and out. Yeah, I think that every other play that they run them in and out, it's going to mix it up a little bit, and it's not going to run Romeo to death because not only is he running the play, but he's also running gassers in and out of the field. Right. So it brings them all the way back to the 12-yard line, third down and forget about it. Romeo's under center. He gives it. He didn't even have time Gosh. to give it. Gosh, Nico Gonzalez. Ball is loose. A penalty flag is down again. And I'm not sure what the call is going to be. It might be a personal foul, but Nico and a host of them were all over him at the daggone snap. It seems like on the snap of the ball, they were in Romeo's face. No time wasted. I love it. Marching it off this way. Uh -huh. Personal foul coming against the T-Breds. They might have celebrated too much. It's not going to be an automatic first down because they had third down and forever but it brings up third down and about five yards getting sloppy on both sides of the ball and there's a timeout as they take a timeout we too will take a timeout you're watching high school sports prime time on hspn stay with us high school game day brought to you by hspn high school production network the High School Production Network is the number one high school sports broadcast network in the nation, bringing you high school sports and events by the high school student for the high school student. HSBN is in place to provide internships for all high school students that have a passion for broadcasting. HSBN is providing opportunities for students to use their passion to not only pursue a great college education, but to endure real-life experiences through a viable entity. 
To find out more information on HSPN, check us out at www.hsbnsports.com. You're watching high school football on HSPN. Eight twenty-two, third quarter. Romeo brings them back out. Third down and five yards. Running that double wing. Biggest game actually is fourth down. If that's correct, no, that's third down. I was going to say if it's fourth down and they're going for it right inside their twenty-seven yard line, you better do a hail mary. Something. Third down, got the yard mark right. Give us another double reverse. It's number 80 coming around the edge, and there's a lot of room out there. If he gets a block, he's up to the 40, the 50, down to the 45-yard line. My goodness gracious. Number 80, once again, jumping in the game. There's some laundry on the field. More laundry on the field. That's Russell Gerard again. He's a junior. And um, that's his second call of the day. That young man may have close to 100 yards. Let's see what the laundry is. You're probably right. I mean, that's that's a great play by HML. Um, they came out. It's good to see, too. Good to see him drive down the field. He made a great stiff arm out there. I don't know who he stiffed arm, but he put him right in the dirt. First down, probably about their third or fourth first down. The yard marker is... Uh, Still having problems over there. He's showing third down, but it is a first down. Well, I don't know how it could be a third down, but there you go. He's got it right. Give us up the middle. It's a host of tacklers, but he's moving that pile close to the first down. Stop by number 50, Patrick Miller. And I'll tell you what, that's close to a first down, and they're moving the ball. Pretty well. Now it brings up second down and about six yards. High school football prime time presented by Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. If you're just tuning in with us, glad you could join us. T Breads up, 35 zip, HML. Here we go. Romeo's got him under center. He's going to give it out to the wide back coming around the edge. He's going to make the edge. No, he isn't. He has got Nico Gonzalez. Hackman trying to hack the ball out of his arm. Nico takes him, rides him out of bounds, and he picks up about three, four yards. It's close to the first down. It's going to bring up third and about one yard. And Nico Gonzalez, one of our impact player of the games. Number nine, 5'11", 176 pounds, class of 2014. He is our safety for the night. Got great hands. Said to be the quarterback of the defense. Still on the market. So, ladies and gentlemen, check him out. Make sure you contact him. Romeo Fumble. fumbles the ball from snap. Loses about five yards. Going to bring up fourth down and five now. And some of the other guys, impact players of the night, if you haven't checked us out, Alan Edward, QB number 10 tonight. He is number 18, Alik Terry, the center, number 54. And like we said before, Nico Gonzalez, number nine, at defensive back. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest score at hashtag HSPN Sports. Got Alvarez back in there. Fourth down and about four. Maybe they're going to spread it out a little bit. 22 set, to. yep, in a single back in the backfield. He's going to roll to his left-hand side, cut it back up. He's looking around. There's nobody there. He's going to take it off on his own, and he's going to take some punishment. Number 44 once again, I don't Dominique know. Elverson. I don't know about that. He's rolling out to his left, but there's no receivers rolling out there with him. He had two wide receivers going vertical. I want to say that they were going to the corner, but... They were way too close to each other. I mean, you could have one defensive back guard and both of those guys. I don't know about that play call right there. Yeah. He wasn't close to it. And we got a timeout. Got a timeout on the field. So they take a timeout, we too will take a timeout. 
You're watching High School Football on HSPN. back live 514 and they just uh, on a fourth down did not convert Alvarez tried to scramble not a good thing for him to do and they had a big hit on him Dominique Elverson and Allen's got the ball he's going to give it to Bussy up the middle he's going to bust one of these Ooh. he's busted out to the 50 he just ran over number five he's out to the 40 he down to the 30 uh -oh. he's down to the 20 down into the 15 inside the 15 Bussy is about to break one, and I'm ready for him to do it. He goes right up the middle and scampers for about 60 yards. My goodness gracious. I love it. I love it. What You think you look at his size, and you say to yourself, yeah, he's a typical scat bat. But whatever they're doing in the weight room, I mean, gosh, he is bouncing off guys left and right. If you, tune, if you were with us earlier, he was basically dragging people around this field. Great run by Henry Bussey. He hit Evans, number five, and Evans just bounced right off of him. Allen comes Allen. out to his left. He's going to take off, and he does get to the edge, close to the edge, picks up about three or four yards down to the eight-yard line. Bussey, one of our impact players of the game. 5'9", 169, he is undeclared. Agility, vision, speed are things that you will see when you watch this high-powered running back. Some of his offers, Alcron State, Bucknell, Buffalo, East Michigan, Illinois State, Louisiana Lafayette. And they're down inside the 10-yard line. Allen gives it the number 22 this time. He takes a big hit. That's Bell. And he just about gets a two or three yards. He is hit right away when he takes the handoff. Number 33, Saunders, and another host of them. Tough running back. Second, third down and goal from the five. T. Breads are threatening once again. You think they'll put it in the corner of the end zone again? I think they got single coverage, six foot six on five foot five. I think it's probably a good. Nope, they're going to give it to Bell right up the middle, and he's going to score a touchdown from five yards out. They didn't need to throw it to the corner. Wow. That made it look easy. And it was a beautiful off tackle, little zone read, and bam, in Bell goes for the score and another six points. For the T-Breads. You got four plays, 50 yards, in about 70 seconds. Thank you, David. And two pieces of laundry get thrown out there. It's going to be against... The Trojans, but it's not going to really matter. Hey, there's a lot of yellow on this field tonight. I'm sure these coaches on both sides of the field are not going to be too happy, especially coming in tomorrow. Thursday night, under the lights. Oh. That kick is blocked. It is blocked. Well, that makes it 41 0 with 322 left in the third quarter. That's a lot of points in a short period of time. I'll tell you, Ryan, I think their longest drive was um, four minutes. Their shortest drive was six seconds, and they've been in between, all in between. Again, if you want live updates and scores and you're not able to watch us, you could catch us on hashtag HSPN Sports any time of the day and the night, and also, for you student athletes, you're watching right now. You want a place to put your profile where over 16,000 coaches are viewing it? 
Go to ncrasportsnetwork.com and post your free profile. And not only your free profile, but get a load of all that free information that teaches you how to play the recruiting game, the eight steps in making a high school resume that a college coach will actually open and look at. And I'm glad you mentioned that because this is the time. You know, the majority of the kids that we deal with, they're last-minute deals. You know, they, they hit us up, and uh, it's, it's very unfortunate the kids that uh, come in too late, which is never too late. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get them through the recruiting process in such a short period of time, but this is the time to start now. Get on the field, work on those plays, six hard plays a game. That's what you need. That's all you need, and you need to know the fundamental aspects of how to play the recruiting game and you can get a lot of that information on the website ncrasportsnetwork.com and simply making sure and understanding how your high school resume works and what gets there and what gets thrown in the trash it's important for you to understand how it works not only on the recruiting game but the financial game as well so if you want that information it's up on the forums and in the blogs on ncrasportsnetwork.com. Once again, Romeo comes up in a double wing offense, and you got all the T breads. Get the ball at the middle, and he picks up. Whistle's blown. He doesn't pick up anything. Bring up second down and 10. A lot of information. You'll get a lot of information that you plug us into your academic mentoring. It's going to teach you how to keep those GPAs higher and those SATs and ACTs up there. Did you know that a 2.8 GPA and an 860 on an ACT is equivalent to sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars of education money? How many eighteen-year-olds you know are making that type of money? How many people will tell you that? None except for the crew at HSPN Sports and NCRA Sports Network, and most importantly, the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation from which all of this comes out of. Yes, a 2.8 and a 860, which is very low on an SAT, an ACT, excuse me, is worth in the Midwest sixteen dollars to $18,000 of education money. Those schools are going to run twenty-seven to $45,000, so you're halfway there. In the most cases, you're three-quarters of the way there. And following those academic mentoring programs brought to you by Keeping Dreams Alive are the NCRA playing the recruiting game seminars. So can't wait. we got BA coming up. And when? The next week? No, they're coming up Saturday. Saturday. That's why everybody's in town. That's why sweet Aaron Kern is sitting here next to us. And I understand the rest of our crew, or some of our crews coming in from Jacks. Aaron came in from Jacksonville. We have folks coming in from St. Augustine, Erica Lane, and Jasmine. I hope she comes in. She does all those great press releases you see in those blogs. And uh, Pat Lowe, he's currently here locally. And they're going to be a whole bunch of them. Shelly Solomon, who's a counselor, and anti-bullying, and team talk and all kind of great stuff she will be there as well um, it's going to be a, a exciting time and we've got coral springs spine and nerve that's going to be donating the food donating the money for us to provide food for the kids wow thank you so much coral springs spine and nerve yes doing thank that. you to them and we just might have a camera out there on saturday we'll definitely be recording it hey if uh if I feel like Coach Lowe is doing this thing, I might just hit that live button, and we might just go live. You never know. You never know when we're doing this kind of stuff. We obviously, we have our schedule, our HSBN schedule throughout the year. But, hey, KDA, academics, 99% of what we do is the educational component, and everything that we are doing is educational. I'm on HSBN, NCRA, KDA. And just to let you guys know, if you want to get involved with KDA, NCRA, HSBN, any of our programs, also can't forget Reggae Runnings, media.com, which uh, just give a shout out to Tonto Irie. Hope you're tuned in with us tonight. One of our directors on the Keeping Dreams Alive board. If you listen to reggae music, make sure to check him out Saturday night after our academic mentoring meeting from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. You're going to tune in to Tonto Irie and some of the smoothest reggae music 
out there on the market today. Uh, every week, always a great show. Always nice to be in there in the booth with Tonto and all the reggae artists that come in. Last week, had some great people come in. Um, Chronics, great artists, upcoming rising artists, and uh, Kalisa. Shout out to them. Got a, Actually got a couple CDs from them. Signed, yeah. signed uh, to KDA Foundation. So Kalisa, Chronics, much love, much respect to uh, everything that you're doing. Keep sending those positive vibes out there. And uh, thanks for supporting the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. Hey, I'm glad you said Reggae Runners Media because tonight we will be picking the Reggae Runners Media player of the game, and that will come somewhere in the middle of the fourth quarter. And uh, we'll be looking at that and voting on that. So stay tuned for that because we will be bringing that to you. And it will be interesting because they will be able to pick up and uh, we'll give them an award, a plaque. And it looks like there's a fumble on the field. Some commotion down there. It, I like think fumble. Who? I could not see who was back there, but I think it he, was uh, Mirth, Mirthal. I'm pretty sure he thought it touched one of the HML players, and he picked it up and he took off with it. Merthel, Merthel, they called it on the announcer. He uh, he got hit and he fumbled the ball. First and ten now, out to the 40-yard line. It's inside of the T breads for the first time in the second half. Wow. Actually, it's the second time they came inside here, and uh, it was when. Uh, quarterback Alvarez scrambled trying to get that first down. So Alvarez is under center again with trips to the bottom side and see if they can put something else on the board. He almost handed the ball off to I think they got a timeout. <laughs> it was interesting because the ball almost got handed off. A lot of confusion going on out there. But as they time, take a timeout, we too will take a timeout. You are watching High School Football Primetime on HSPN. You're watching High School Football on HSPN. Come on down to Bruce Room. Hey, taste is just the beginning. First thing that you notice, this is your kind of place. When you sit back and relax, you're gonna love the taste. Good times don't go to waste. You found the right place. Come on down to Bruce Room. Taste is just the beginning. Oh, good. Well, we're back with you. 127 in the third quarter. And um, just went dead. I went dead. Hey, I went. You're still on. Oh, we're back in. There's a run out here to the right side. He's going to catch the edge. We've got some new players in. Some fresh legs, hopefully. Picked up about five yards. Yep, I think they brought some new legs in the game. I yeah, think, I well, think they need to end of the third quarter. I think on both sides of the ball. Alvarez back in at quarterback. Spreading it out a little bit. Got three on top. Yeah, trips on top. Just moving it around. He's a sophomore. He fakes the give. He's going to run to the right side. I, I don't think, think so. Fumble. Did he fumble? My goodness gracious. Number seven, number 11, and number 90. Got Alex Morales, Sheriff, and number 90, Baxter, gang tackling him. The Sheriff, Mr. Hollywood. I remember interviewing him back in the spring. They call him Hollywood. That'll bring it down probably the last play of the third quarter. As we go into this fourth quarter, I just want to mention to you, I uh, said it briefly, uh, we're going to be looking at the middle of this quarter who is going to be the Reggae Runnings media player of the game. And last week's, last week's, last, night. last night's player of the game was Deltron Hopkins, Booker T. Washington, wide receiver. Congratulations, 
Deltron Hopkins. And tonight we'll have another Reggae Runners Media player of the game. And we'll announce that right about halfway through the fourth quarter. So we got first game, game uh, week one, Lawan Hunt, Reggae Runners Media player of the game. Next week, we head down Booker T. Uh, Booker T, Miami Central. Wow, I'm losing track of all these games. We're doing so many. <laughs> Week two, we got Miami Central versus Booker T. Treyon Harris takes the reggae run as media player of the game. And then we are into a double header. Last night, played Booker T, Washington, Carroll City. We got Deltron Hopkins, reggae run as media player of the game. Week three. And guess what? Not only are they going to get special plaques from Reggae Runnings Media, but have the opportunity to come on Reggae Runnings Media Saturday night on Tonto's show, have the opportunity to go and get an interview segment, get to talk about the season, get to talk about what's going on with uh, school, and just, we just have a party up there, you know? Reggae music, I don't know if you, you tune in too often to reggae music, but it's it's a different vibe. It's a different arena. But we always have a great time up there with Tonto Irie. And I know Tonto, he's, uh, he gives a lot of love to these kids being apart. And Tonto, if you're listening, man, shout out. He and Sweetness, loving it. Looks like there's movement. Got some excitement on the T-Breads. Number 43, John pierre Lewis. It's a sophomore. Brought the sophomore into the game. Like we said, thoroughbreds, 41 Trojans, nothing. We're into the fourth quarter. You think we'll get a running clock? I think it may be running. I just try to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Alvarez. Alvarez is back. Throws a deep sidearm. Almost picked off. Well, it's good to see the ball in the air. Number one out there. He's playing both ways. Still playing both ways. 41-point lead, Myrtle. I guess so. Coach Berman. Unless there's another one, number one jersey in the game. I'm He's got him on both line. sides of the ball, 41 points. And they're playing both ways. As I'm looking at the <laughs> sideline, I don't think, I don't think, yeah. Same number one. Yeah, it's a running clock because that was an incomplete pass. Coach Berman putting these guys to work, <laughs> getting them in shape. I think Nico's still out there as well. Alvarez looking for the swing pass. He throws it. It's going to oh. be picked off in here. He might take it to the house. That's number 16 ball. He's taking it down to the 40, down to the 30, to the 20. He's down to the 10, 5, touchdown, number 16, oh. Rashad. Ball takes it 65 yards for the Thoroughbreds score. No nice. laundry on the field, 47 points. Nice. Great job by Ball. Holy mackerel. He was sitting right there. It was a short throw by Alvarez. Receiver wasn't even open. Ball comes up, catches it with both hands, does a little monkey drill with his hand down. I like it. And he just picks up his momentum and takes off and takes it to the house. So now he has to share it with Henry Bussey. I'm sorry, with Nico Gonzalez, pick and score. Ball's got a pick and score as well. One play, 65 yards on an interception in eight seconds. Thanks, David. Trying to confuse me, putting eight <laughs> yards on that play. Oh, I Where love do these it. guys learn any math down here at <laughs> Hialeah? Gee, many Christmas. Oh, we're not calling Coach DC. <laughs> I say, Coach, because oh, what we love to do, clock. HSPN, we're all about the kids, uh, KDA, but we love to intern these kids. We provide them with service hours and just give them the opportunity to get behind the camera, get, get, be a part of the production crew just to see what it takes to uh, get that real life experience. And uh, we just love being around him and call Coach DC. I said, how many guys you got for me? He says, 10. <laughs> that's, okay. DC. that's DC for you. And Wilton's up here, man. He's getting it down. I'll tell you what, he had the camera upside down sideways for a little while. And you might have caught a couple of those. But right now, <laughs> he's got it upside right. And his boys are going to tell him now when he gets back in the huddle 
and they see all those action shots, they'll know Wilton is the one that did all those close shots, and you're doing a great job, Wilton. We appreciate it. You're the man. What a mean to timeout. Who's calling timeouts? It's 47 to nothing. Trying to make corrections in the fourth quarter. Maybe they're giving us a commercial timeout. Maybe hey. they think we're running. Well, hey. Let's throw up a sponsor. We'll throw up a sponsor for you. This is high school primetime in Mylander Stadium. This is HSPN Sports. Stay with us. What's this searching for? Reggae music. Ladies and gentlemen, the wickedest ready in the world. Tanto Aire coming in live and hot. 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 We focus on the cause of the issue and not the resulting factor. We meet all of our patients' expectations and beyond. Here, you're not a patient, you're family. www.coralspringspineandnerve.com Well, folks, we just had a fake field goal. So what? I didn't get it to you. And they Elite, got it. Elite Terry. He is the holder on the field goal team, number 54. He got the ball. Oh, my gosh. Rolled out to the left, wide open in the back of the end zone. I mean, what, what do you say about something like that? I don't know what you say something about that. Two-point conversion with... Uh, 47 points on the board. Uh, you think they're sending a message? I don't know. I uh, think they won by 55 last year. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure what that was all about. As a matter of fact, it was such a non-play for us. We were running our uh, Coral Springs P Spine and Nerve, who's doing the uh, uh, donated the money for the food for this weekend, and we weren't even watching it. So uh, surprised on the two-point conversion. Uh, Coach Berman with 9.23 left in the fourth quarter, 47 points, makes it 49 to Zippo. And uh, T-Breads will be kicking it off again. Another few minutes into this quarter, and we're going to announce our T-Breads player of the game. And the reason we got to hold off, we usually do it in the first part of the fourth quarter because you never know who's going to score again and or make a big play on the offensive defensive side. I already know who we're inclined to pick, but I'm not gonna tell you yet. We want you to stay with us until we make that call. Kicking it off, short kick. Wow, it takes a backward bounce, kicks off the leg of the receiver. Oh. He gets laid out there. Oh my goodness. Was that number 22, Bell, that laid out the wood? Holy mackerel, that was a smack. <laughs> They're bringing it. They're bringing it still in the fourth quarter. Relentless. I mean, you look at a game like this, crosstown rivalries. I mean, how far are they? What are they, about four, five miles apart, away from each other? That's it. That's it. They're close. Probably even closer, but, hey, 63 years and going. It's a long time. That's a long time, and you told me when you walked through the hallways of Miami Lakes, it was like going back into time. It is. Felt like I was in a bomb shelter, but it took me back to one of those old, made me feel kind of like I was in Greece. It was an old concrete white architecture, huh? Ready for the, no, that thing will stay up forever. Oh, you're Ready talking about Greece the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Double reverse, and he goes down from the big hit on the handoff. And for a five-yard loss, that handoff was so hard that it took the running back down on the carpet. Probably knocked the wind out of him as well. It's one of those nights. Might it's have to get a substitution. How it's been going for the Trojans all night. When your running back makes the tackle on your other running back on a handoff, 
you know it's gone south. And they are still going. I know you guys can't hear the band, but the crowd is still live and kicking. The cheerleaders are still down there shaking, and the band is beating on those drums, blowing on those horns, whatever you want to call it. This game is still underway. Fourth quarter, 49, zip. Romeo's going to take it around the right side. He's going to pick up about the loss on the last play. It'll bring up second down and 10 yards. And the clock is running. Well, Hialeah will come out of this with a two and one. Hialeah Miami Lakes will come out of this with goose egg and three. Yeah, I was confused in the beginning. Trying to figure out the records. Forgot we were doing, uh, forgot we did a game last night. Thought we were already in week four. Double header. Look at this block down. The, look at this. Oh, my goodness. You got a double team down here, and I know it's not on camera, but 45-yard line. <laughs> hey, double team. Who is that, number 59? That's number 59. He got driven. Jesse, he got driven back about 20 yards on a double team. Brings up fourth down. And they are going to punt. So let's who they're going to put back deep to return that punt. We got our, we got Bussy. I can't see him right now. He's standing sideways. and We got Henry back there. They got players running gotta get them in off the field. and off the field. I don't know. They look like they got a whole bunch of players out there. There's no green flag. Decent punt. Might hit him. Yep, that is Bussy. Oh, <laughs> he wanted to pick it up. He wanted to pick it up, and he heard Coach. I wouldn't be surprised if he picked that thing up. Yeah, what do you got to lose? Well, you could lose a lot if you picked it up and fumbled it. Reminds me of uh, a player that we followed last year. It's at the University of Alabama. Oh, yeah. Mr. Action Jackson himself. Do not punt it to him. Just like uh, Dalvin Cook. You let a ball roll down in front of you, and you let it, he'll let you fall asleep. I don't know how many times we saw him last year pick up. Oh, gosh. Punts. And, and he'd wait till the last house. second. He would. Well coached. Well, they still got Allen in there, setting some records tonight. And the give is to Bussy, and when is he going to bust it? This may be the one. Bust it up to the 50. Nope, they're going to grab him on the out of bounds. He spins out. They're going to take him down about the 43, 44 yard line. Another 23 yard gain, Henry Bussey. And we might as well tell him, Brian, as well. who the player of the game is. If the, he already didn't know. You didn't know already. It is Mr. Henry Bussey who has a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown touchdown and he might get another one and he may get another one and he is our official reggae runnings media player of the game henry bussey number two from the hialeah thoroughbreds congratulations henry we will uh, definitely make sure that you are tuned in and get on the show with tonto irie and you will also receive a plaque and a certificate and you will be in the wall of reggae runners media fame they call it yes sir great game by henry he well deserved came out here and definitely with determination <laughs> and you talk about 49 zip these uh these trojans will be remembering this for the next couple days and uh unfortunately feeling it until the next year we'll yeah. be right here back in my lander alan's still in there no snaps low. Now we got a new running back, number 20. He's going to take it to the edge. Fresh legs. Lynn Bryant. Close to the first down. Lynn Bryant, he's 5'7", sophomore. There you go, Ryan. Some young blood. Looks like they got some little ones in there now, don't they? They got it. They have the depth. I remember going to their practice. They got plenty of guys out there. be honest, I have no idea why Allen is still in the game. Well. I mean, you're up 49 
Zip. Maybe, I don't know, they got a pen. Well, that's it looks like a personal foul on somebody. Maybe, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to say that. They might, they might put it in again. Going for a uh, record score, bounce off the ground. It's given to the little guy again, number 20, Bryant. And he's uh, picked up for about two yards. Snap was a little low, and Allen bounced it off the ground. Yeah, I love the announcement. There will be school tomorrow. Make, right? make, make sure everyone gets a good night's rest. There and they will, will be school tomorrow. There will be school. <laughs> Friday, we'll regroup, and we're going to have a lot of tape out for you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then next Thursday, we're back down at Traz Powell Miami Stadium Jackson to pick up the number one team in the nation, Treon Harris and company. Miami Jackson meet. and Booker T. Washington. Going to be another good one, another high score. Allen's going to take the ball. They're still having him run it. Brought it down to about the 11-yard line, picks up about four yards. He's still running the ball. I don't know. What do you think, American? We already gave out the reggae running's media player of the game. <laughs> we can't take it back now. Hey, we might br just bring him up too. Make sure uh, Henry has some company. I'm sure they. <laughs> I'm sure they'd like both like to get up there. When uh, we brought up Lawan, uh, he was accompanied by Sam Bruce, uh, wide receiver on University School, great athlete as well, highly recruited. Allen gives it back. Number 20, Bryant. He's going to take it up the middle. That little scat back gets it inside the five-yard line. I love it. He's my, he's, I'm telling you, they might score again. And no Bryant, doubt about it. He's laying there, not getting up. And uh, he picks up the first down, but he looks like he's hurt. And that's going to stop the clock. The injured player. Well... We've got one more timeout. Folks, you see there's 121 left in the game. If you're still with us, we appreciate it. You're watching High School Sports Primetime on HSPN. High School Football Primetime presented by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. The KDA Foundation is a 501c3 non-for-profit youth organization that specializes in empowering communities and providing opportunities for academic and athletic growth. We address vital issues concerning transitional phases of primary and secondary education through sports and academic advisory camps, health and wellness programs, and athletic scholarships grant and aid assistant programs for college. To find more information, check us out at www kdafoundation.org You're watching High School Football on HSPN. man ball walks off the field on his own on his own leg so that's a good thing and we don't want to see anybody this late in the game get injured and uh, they're going to be content to kneel it down the thoroughbreds are going to take this 49 to nothing I think I guess uh, Berman figures is not worth having a player injured with that many uh, that that big of a lead and that much time left on the clock so folks once again we are so glad you watched us tonight been a part of this program. We want to thank Wilton. We want to thank Kevin Gottlieb on the camera. Ryan Stout, Glenn Stout here with Aaron Curran. And we're going to count it down in the last few seconds. And we're going to have an interview in a little bit that we'll have pre recorded for you with uh, Henry Bussey, the Reggae Runners Media Player of the Game. Well, 63 years and moving on. There's always next year, right? 
There's always next year. That's the best <laughs> thing about football. There's always next year, and these schools aren't going anywhere. The stadium isn't going anywhere. This is high school football prime time presented by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. Thank you so much for tuning in with us tonight. You got the Hylia High School T-Breads and the Hylia Miami Lakes Trojans. We're here, South Florida's finest. This is high school football on HSPN. He's going to snap, punt it. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. He's out his feet. Oh, my goodness. Do the 40. Let's 